now they can hear us. And uh, Laura's sitting back there because she's gonna prep some samples and I'm gonna put them on the, uh, the droid cam so you can actually see the whole process. And first she needs to come take the samples out of the SEM. It's ready, yes. So this should be, ah, yeah, all set up. So you can see she's got a screwdriver. She just basically, you can keep going. <laughs> she just basically undid a little right. uh, bolt. Yeah, you can close it. So this is the SEM itself. This is Laura herself. <laughs> This is the entire system, and um, what we're working on is we made some new. Yeah, I'll just actually this is fine. We made some new um, stubs, which are here. So you can see the actual samples. There's 14 of them in that container, and uh, only seven will fit on the carousel. So we're going to uh, prep seven of them. Randomly? Um, actually, half of those are, they say ash, and the other half say uh, grove. Yes. So we want ash. Do, let's do grove. Okay. Actually, yeah. And then, um, so this is the double-sided sticky tape that we use, carbon tape. Um, and it's sized to fit under those. Mm -hmm. And then these are the little uh, T-shaped stubs that the samples sit in the actual carousel in. And we're just putting a little piece of tape between the sample and the stub Oops. so that they look like these when they're done. And you can see, of course, or maybe hopefully, that those are um, not sputter coated and those ones are. So the sort of like gold color that you're seeing there is real. And then uh, that's the uh, whole process basically. No, don't screw them. Um, not yet? Don't screw them in because we have to put them in the uh, ah. sputter coater. I was just giving you a place to set them. <laughs> so all of the um, all of the samples that we'll be prepping are all from Grove Lake, which is the sample we looked at on Wednesday with um, Mark Edland and Joe Mohan when they were here. And um, I just uh, prepped a whole bunch of them because if you were here for that stream, you probably will recall that uh, we found something, we don't know what it is, and um, we couldn't even get it into a genus. So uh, usually when that happens, um, especially when neither Mark nor I could find anything remotely similar to it, um, it's a good idea to find more than just one specimen. Uh, make sure it's not some sort of weird circus freak individual or uh, something that uh, you know isn't uh, easily explainable. Yeah, it's a mystery diatom, and we want to try to solve it. So what I did is I just made seven stubs, or we used to just have one, or actually we had two, but one of them wasn't very densely prepared. And in these, I put as much as I could fit on each one of those little aluminum stubs. So they all have basically a full density of material on them. And um, the hardest part of this whole process is peeling off the little sticker covers with gloves on, which Laura's doing an excellent job with right now. Um, because usually you need fingernails or uh, I sometimes will just use the forceps to uh, peel back the, the sticker tapes. But she's doing great. She's not even needing that. So mm -hmm. that's a mark of a true professional right there. She's got it all under control. Yes. And um, so we're going to take them from here, and once they're all, seven of them are prepped, we're going to take them over to the sputter coater, and then uh, we'll go through the sputter coating process, and, uh, and then we'll put them in the SEM, and then 
Well, we'll put them into the uh, computer so that you can actually see stuff. Good? Yes. Perfect. Onward. So, this is a. Uh, you get froze. Hang on. It's still frozen. Oh, you can just open that lid and pop them in. Hang on, I'm going to bounce over to this <coughs> and back. Oh, it's still frozen for some reason. We'll switch over to s the main. Give us a second. Droid cam's being weird. It says it lost my receiver. No, oh, it's working on my end. Okay, you have them all loaded in there? Yes. Let's see if I can get it to work. Still doesn't think I'm actually here. working. Yeah, I bumped something with my thumb and oh. basically it just totally Droid Cam is super finicky. Now it's working there again. Okay. So uh, what she's done is loaded all of them into the little ring here. It's basically holding the samples. And we're going to close that lid. Yeah, watch that little thing. So, so when this is closed, then we can... That's uh, the sputter coating process. So I'm trying to get away from it so I could talk on the microphone for a second because it can't quite hear us uh, from across the room easily. And all it's doing right now is pumping the air out of that little chamber. So the, um, the bell jar at the top has to be in a vacuum in order for the plasma cloud to uh, sputter coat the actual samples. So um, you can see the samples are kind of just spinning around in there. That's so that they will ultimately be evenly coated. And usually I wait till this thing says 1.2 or so. It's taking its time getting there. So um, one of the things is that when the air has a little bit more moisture in it, it takes a little bit longer for the vacuum to pump down, um, to try to get the moisture out of the chamber. And normally we have this uh, dehumidifier running in the summertime when it starts to get humid. Uh, but I don't think that uh, we've changed the, pulled out the water. So I think it's full. And I'm gonna do that uh, while we're waiting for the sputter coating to happen probably or maybe once we get the samples in the chamber and uh, the relative humidity in our room is up to 70 percent which is quite high so like to... it Uh, then this uh, sputter coating process only takes about a minute and a half or so. And um, most of the time we're just sort of hanging around waiting. But then it will be uh, coated in gold, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, my lab in the university. This is the SEM lab. I have two. My my other lab is a, uh, a light microscope lab. It's where all my students are hanging out right now, uh, hard at work, except for Laura here. 
who is uh, hard at work screwing around with me on the SEM. So uh, we're at Indiana State University. This is um, this is my SEM lab, and uh, pretty soon we'll be looking at stuff in the same way that those little uh, images in the bottom right corner were uh, were displaying Nifty. So uh, we're going through the whole process of just uh, putting together the uh, the sample. So it's probably vacuum down enough, and then we'll start the uh, the sputter coating. What's it say? I'm going to say. Still working on it. So just trying to get around the relative humidity. Sometimes it's sort of a bear. One, two, seven. One, two, seven. Yeah. It's all right. We can make conversation while we wait. Yes, yeah, so behind the curtain, we've pulled back the Oz. Uh, is behind the curtain here, and um, while we're here, I guess I could showcase the SEM itself. So this is the TestScan Vega 3 scanning electron microscope, and it's like maybe two computer towers stacked on top of each other in size. Um, the desk comes with the actual SEM, and uh, that computer down there, the, the wires coming out of it is our uh, computer that we're using and then this is the microphone this is the little panel that we use to control the scanning electron microscope um, the top wheel is magnification the bottom wheel is the focus and then these little tiny knobs are for fine focus and that sort of thing and you can change the beam intensity and the contrast and the brightness here but I never do that and you can also move the stage mechanically here but I never do that because you can just use a mouse to do it so we don't really need to um, we can control everything using just the interface. And the interface is more or less what you guys usually see. Uh, it looks something like that. It's you know more or less showcasing almost exactly what you see when you see the, uh, the stream. 29. What's that? It's close enough. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to turn on the sputter coder. Yeah. And um, what that does is it creates this sort of plasma cloud of gold, which is sort of coating over the, um, the samples that we put in there. And you can see they're kind of spinning around in a disco fashion. You can actually see the plasma cloud is that purple thing up there. And sometimes it looks better in the dark. I'm not sure to see. So you can kind of see what's going on. Um, and the plasma cloud comes down to about halfway through the chamber. And the samples are way up in that cloud. So when they're done preparing, what will happen is uh, they'll be covered with a fine layer of gold. Have you been kind of yet? No. I'm just going to guess it, roughly a minute and a half. Uh, I suspect it's another 30 seconds yeah. or so. What's the light show? Probably be over. Oh, there was another carousel in here? Oh, that's the carousel yes. we used. Uh -huh. Good buttons, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. Mm -hmm. All the green should be red. Mm -hmm. That one too. That's it. You don't have to wait for anything? Well, you have to wait for the vacuum once though. And then Laura just gonna load them into the carousel for us. Here you go. <laughs> awesome with the gold. Very nice. Good pun. 
and uh, so all she's doing is putting them back into the carousel that she loaded them into originally so that we could carry them around. And then we're gonna just open up the chamber here, pop them in, and then we've gotta pump down the SEM as well. Uh, but from there, then, uh, then we'll be actually using the SEM. And I can switch over to the other camera so you don't have to put up with non-gimbaled hand cam movements. So you can pull this open and I can give you a sense of the chamber itself. That's what it looks like on the inside. So uh, that uh, thing up there at the top that has like a wire mesh around it is the secondary detector. The one that's right above us the left, like 11 o'clock, is the EDAX detector, and then the cone up there is the, um, the pull piece, and that's the camera looking in on the far, far around the corner you can't quite see. And then she's just putting it in, lining it up with the pins, and then, uh, and then we close it carefully. Is the... Gas is on, yeah. Okay. This chamber's open. So we can switch over to the main view and I can put my droid cam away. I don't think we need to watch me uh, change the dehumidifier. Hey Anna, how are you doing? Yeah, we're looking on the inside of the SEM for a minute. And now what we have to do is pump down the SEM. So there's the normal noise that you hear, which is the pump engaging and trying to pump all of the humid air out of the chamber. Um, do I have a preference for live or fossilized microscope subjects? Uh, the deader it is, the happier I am to look at it in a microscope, usually. Um, although, uh, you know, if all the organic matter is gone, there's not a lot of difference between a fossil and a living organism. So as long as it's well cleaned, um, that's all that really matters. I mostly like to look at the dead stuff, though, because uh, I think we can get a lot closer and look at things a lot more, uh, the ultrastructure a lot more closely in uh, in SEM or even in the light microscope if it's dead. If it's living, it creates a problem. Although, um, I think I did mount some of Pacific Plankton's samples where the chloroplasts were still in them and I just went ahead and mounted them in nafrax like that. Yeah, you can get a lot closer and I think you can see a lot more. Hey, Mama Bonbon. Bon. Um, I don't know if I missed anything. So Little Chook, someone gave a shout out to Little Chook or no? I don't see one. Oh, there you go. Uh -huh. I just have to ask and then Pacific Plankton does it for me. Two Chooks! So um, right now we're just waiting for the chamber to pump down and it's gradually doing that. Um, just like the the um, sputter coder, you're a helper. I'm a helper. Um, just like the sputter coder, we're fighting the humidity a little bit, so we just have to wait for the you know moisture moisture laden air to pump out, and then uh, we'll be able to look at it. Not the air, but the diatoms. In the meantime, we can scooch it up. I can do the part that makes everybody nervous, except yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can do most of it. Let's move to, I'm going to move this up to five, but I'm going to wait until we actually have, have the, something in there. Yeah. Until it turns green for us. Is it hot here? Um, I would argue it's warm today, yes. Uh, it's warm and kind of sticky. So. Not that sticky, though. It's, it, it could be worse. Yeah, I, I... Uh, in, uh, 
in US terms it's 86 degrees which is 30 degrees yeah. if you're in Celsius if you're the rest of the world <laughs> I do have a hard time with Fahrenheit do you? well yeah it's hard to I've gotten better like I know what 60s mean and what 90s mean but not very specific well, when you talk about temperature changes and you're talking about them with somebody else, do you say um, it's 1.2? Or are you never that specific? No, not that specific. You but if you up? told me, oh, it's 73 degrees, I would be like... But I can tell the difference between 78 and 75. So I feel like there's, there's one advantage to the Fahrenheit system, which is that um, you don't have to use decimals to describe temperature mm -hmm. changes that you could sense. Like if yeah. your house is a little hot, you can tell. And um, like if somebody kept the temperature in the house at 78 and somebody likes it at 73, you, you can tell that. And that's really only like one degree difference in Celsius, but in Fahrenheit. It's that's the thing, it's not one to one. So right. that's why I'm like, ah. <laughs> 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 There's, that's the only advantage, Anna. It's the only advantage, and I will grant it. Uh, it's that you can distinguish the fine scale a little bit easier. Uh, the rest of the things are dumb. <laughs> See how hard it's fighting to try to yeah, get? Yeah, it's struggling. Yeah. You might have to vent it and pump it again just to get it. It's still going down. I feel like it's going to turn green any moment now. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> It'll get there. They can't actually see the bar because I have this color thing in front of it. Get rid of that. There, you can see the bar. A <laughs> little vacuum that could. Yeah, it's like, I think I can. Ooh, oh, I'm. Huh? Do you see? I told you so. Okay. Yeah, I had no faith. <laughs> you didn't have any faith. No. Well, hopefully now I will engender faith when I say I think it's going to work. Okay. So, what we normally do is minimum magnification. So we can see how well the slide is uh, prepped. Whoever did this did a great job. I did these myself. So. <laughs> Shout it to you. That's right. For once, they're done the way I like them, or else. Uh, and now we're at minimum magnification. I'm going to actually zoom us a little closer. That's as close as we get. Um, so we're at now five millimeters between us and the sample, or the pull piece in the sample. So we've got a little bit of wiggle room, but not much. And we're up to temperature, and we are more or less where we need to be. So usually what I would do at this point is start looking around for diatoms, or something that we what can use. What are we use. looking for? So these samples are from uh, the diatomite, which was the Grove Lake. Grove. Mm -hmm whatever, Grove City, I'm not sure what the name of the actual site is, um, which is like the six million year old samples that Mark oh, wow. was talking about. So these are six million year old. They're captured in ash. Mm -hmm. So these big pieces that you see that are triangle shapes and stuff that are up here, that's all ash. This is all the bigger pieces that don't look like a diatom. Those are ash. And then uh, we're zoomed really far out. So we're not gonna see diatoms at that scale very easily. And hopefully we will when we zoom in, though. Otherwise, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> to look for them. <laughs> we might need to prep some more material. Okay. Oh. So this is a diatom. It's just not uh, in focus yet. How? We start off right. There you go. 
This is not the diatom that I'm looking for, but it is a diatom. So a step in the direction we want to go. And normally what I would do is first things, oops, I took it out of focus. First thing I would normally do is zoom in so that we're looking at something that's easy to identify in the middle of the screen and mostly in focus. It seems like maybe it's drifting a little. Yeah, it's drifting upward a little. Uh, and then heating adjustment. We'll see how well it does. Sometimes it causes the whole screen to go black. Oh no. Sometimes it comes out perfect when we're done. And while it's doing that, we can talk about whatever's in here. I found a diatom. Yeah. Uh, you'll be robbed of seeing the lunar eclipse on Wednesday evening. Yeah, I think we looked at this and I was trying to figure out if we'll even see it, but the Pacific Coast should be able to see it. I don't know if we'll... It'll be... Uh, it'll be for some reason too late in the evening for us, maybe? I'll have to check. I'll look it up. I don't know when the timing of it is, and uh, and it's critical that we know what time. If it's uh, at a time where I can stream, I might try to stream it. And then people can see it through my uh, camera, or my telescope even. Heat has been adjusted, according to the computer. Hopefully that will make it stop drifting. It's still drifting just a little, but it's not bad. And those who live in the eastern third of the United States will see little or nothing of this event. Why? What time is it happening? I don't know. Is it going to be in the early morning for when us the or something? When the visual show begins uh, to get underway, the moon will be the, will either be approaching its setting all we, all we, or will have already set. So I need to those get up someplace live, high so I can see it on the horizon? Yeah. Those who live in the central and especially the far western states have the advantage. Well, for once there's an advantage to getting up late. It's going to be 14 minutes and 31 seconds. Mm -hmm. We are EDT, CDT, MDT, PTD. We're in Eastern. But so we're really EDT? close. To, we're really close to uh, central. Okay, so the E one. Essentially. EDT or C. CDT? The C is probably closer to what we are in terms of the sun. Okay, so. <laughs> EDT is our time, but uh, with respect to whether we would see it, it's closer. We should to be CDT. able to see when the moon enters. Then the total eclipse begins at six eleven a.m. And then the mm, total eclipse will end at 6.25 a.m. Yeah, I don't know. I'm up at that time. <laughs> I'm sure I, I can do it. <laughs> You're up at that time. Yeah. But it'll mostly be set by that point. Yeah, I don't know if I can. There's going to be buildings in my way, right? Yeah, I can get up on the roof, though, of this building. Uh, Which one is HDT? H? Yeah. Hawaii? Okay, they get the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you can post a map. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I don't know about getting up at 6, and it would probably be the sun would be up already almost. It might actually work out really well. I can go up on a roof, I can get on the roof of this building. 
Uh, I think. I don't. I, I just need to look where the key is. I think I can get it though. I either have it in my lab or I can get it. We'll be fine. That's a shame that it's in the morning time. Yeah, I don't like getting up at six. And if I stay up all night, then I'll just miss what happens during the day on Wednesday. I'll be up. I, I just, I probably won't see anything. No. But if we were on this roof, you probably could see all the way to the horizon. Because it'll set over by the river. It's still drifting a little. Let's see... Nothing is happening on Wednesday? Um, I mean, I have a stream on Wednesday. I could skip it, but I feel like it would make Joe and Mark a little angry. <laughs> what makes it drift? Normally, the drifting is a little bit because the, uh, the, it's usually the temperature that's not quite right. So usually a heating adjustment will fix it. Um, but the heating adjustment didn't seem to stop it from drifting anymore. So uh, I thought maybe I would try the column Wobble centering. Thingy? Column centering is step two, but usually if those are working together, it won't drift at all. For this instrument anyway. And it's only really obvious if you're the beam will go all the way through the slide and then it'll come back and the image will then be like somewhere else slightly mm -hmm. off the edge of the page so i just want to check to see if that's fixed it or not and then otherwise i think it's ready to start collecting images and then i can let laura take control mm -hmm. it probably still needs to be stigmated but you need practice at that ah. so <laughs> It looks like maybe it's, it's drifting a just bit, a little yeah. tiny drift. Yeah. Yeah. You can see how far it is right there. It's, a, it's just a slight drift. So usually it's because the heat adjustment's not perfect. But, um, you know, it's going to make the diatoms stretch just a little tiny bit. So they're just a little bit wrong. <laughs> All right. Laura, you're in charge. Are Find we doing the sigmation thingy or not? I would like to do it on something where we have an internal view so that we could look at the detail a little okay. bit better. So there's another diatom right yeah. there. We didn't have oops, to go far. Oops. And another one. girdle bun, right? Yeah. So... Is this one an internal view? That's no. external. Still the outside. That's like a little stuff. And this other one was a cyclotelloid. And that one up there is an all Syro. You can see the ring least, mm -hmm. which is the circle that's inside. That's characteristic of all mm -hmm. It's characteristic of all of Syro. And while that's happening, I'm going to try to get my own stream on my phone so I can see the chat. Because my computer's battery is almost dead. Oh. Hey, it turns out I'm streaming right now. From your phone? From the yes, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I can hear myself. <laughs> Just a little behind. Thanks for that uh, genus link, Pacific. And know, thank you for the follow, Tuscorica. Very cool. Not the one we're looking for. No, that's that same cyclotelloid. Uh, it's just dissolved. Um, the thing that I found on Wednesday with Mark and uh, Joe was really tiny. Okay. Like five microns across. And anything, though, will work if we're just trying to take pictures. This like a siren? Take pictures of anything you find that's a diatom that you uh -huh. want an image.
you have no restrictions. But if we find the little guy, that's what I want to focus on. So we need some more images of the yes. little dude. Better. Definitely better. <laughs> Also, the beam intensity is currently at 10, if you set it to 7. Uh, no. Just click right there where the 10 is. And then change it to 7. Where? <laughs> yeah. That'll improve the image quality. 10's okay if you're like zoomed way out, like something's huge. But if you're starting if to look at small. things that are a couple microns across, you probably want to... And it's good if you wanted to stigmate it from that, you probably could, although it's not um, it's not going to be easy. Because uh, there's not a bunch of little things that you uh -huh. can like, easily focus. I don't know. Hey, Bill Nash. Also, hello, Dangling. How's it going? You need attention? I'm sorry. Uh, there's some attention for you, Dangling. Hello. I hope you're having a great day. Hope you're... Uh, your work anxiety has been lower than usual. Um, Bill Nash said we're nerds, and he said hi. How do you stigmate properly? Just based on image blurriness, or is there some... Uh, no, it's, based, it's basically just like micro-focusing. So, um, like, in, in fact, what you want to find is some, something that's... Um, perfectly circular because if it stigmates correctly it will stay perfectly circular but also um, you can maximize the contrast when you're do when you're sort of trying to focus something and uh, what you'll find is that when it's in peak focus it'll also have peak contrast so if you have something little with a bunch of little holes and I mean smaller than what we have here <laughs> even um, so like the Kerbera on the inside of a diatom is usually a good thing to pick at because it's small, it's perfectly circular, and then it's got a whole bunch of little circles, uh, little holes inside of it. And so um, you can get the maximum contrast easily, and then you can get the little tiny pores in focus um, using this sort of just micro-focusing. And it's a little bit like being at the doctor's office. In fact, um, if you go to the doctor's office and you have astigmation, in your eyes, this is how they fix it, right? They just put it in front of you and they say better, worse, better, worse, better, worse, better, worse, and you, uh, you just pick between the two until it starts to be clearer. So um, effectively we do the same thing. Our stigmation will allow us to fix the X direction and then the Y direction, or the Y then the X, but you can handle them independently. So um, what we'll do is fix it in the vertical direction, fix it in the horizontal direction, and then uh, your thing should go from being egg-shaped to being perfectly circular. So, but it'll also then fix all of your focusing because you're focusing, when your st stigmation's off, basically things that are slightly out of focus start to take on like an egg shape that should be round. It's a greeting, not a pejorative. Yeah, I know. I'm not offended by being called a nerd. Just don't call me geek. Those guys eat the heads off chickens at circuses. Oh my god. Um, you only had one panic attack today? Okay. Uh, well, we might be trying to stream on Wednesday. Uh, it's six in the morning. Yep. You can leave that as Ashfall. And then uh, this is Grove. So you can just change this to say Alakasaira. And if there's already an Alakasaira, you can just put a one or a two or a three or whatever. Hmm. Just put a two in there, see what happens. Yes, because this one, I don't know what <laughs> yeah, the name of it is. I think it just says Alakasaira. It's the same species. But we're trying to characterize, Oops. we're trying to actually characterize all the diatoms in these samples. Okay. So. So it's just the all are good. yeah everything everything you find will be good 
Um, it's just that the really little guy is something interesting and new, and we're really trying to find an internal view of it. So it's super small, though. So um, you might want to switch back to 10 just so that you get used to changing the beam intensity so it's set. Uh, these ones. Yeah. Um, because when you're cruising around, it's actually a little bit easier to see when the beam intensity is high because you're zoomed out a little bit and yes. it's easier to spot stuff. And then you just have to remember to change it back to seven, seven when you go to take your picture. Okay. But I will sometimes just be lazy and scroll around at seven because I can see well enough. But I feel like when you're looking for something really little, it's useful to have the, um, the beam intensity set to 10 and then you can easily zoom in and out on it. I think that's just junk. Ash junk. <laughs> So while you look at these, you also catalog each reference, uh, each for reference later on, yeah. Usually what we're doing is um, going through uh, doing the SCM collection and then my colleague Mark Edlund has already gone through these samples in, I think that's a different species of Olicocyra, has already gone through and looked at these things in the light microscope and imaged them. and. Um, Hi. We're in here. So he's gone through and looked at them in the light microscope already. And um, in some cases, he knows what he's looking for, what we've seen. And in some cases, he doesn't know what's, you know, we might come across something he hasn't seen. Um, but they've, they've got several years worth of collections from the same site because um, they have this as part of a course. And every year the class goes out and collects some of these diatomite material um, from the site. And, uh, and then he just has that collection. So um, <laughs> uh, is your job always this chill or are there more stressful periods? Um, my research job is always this chill. Like when I'm doing research, it's always pretty laid back. Um, but I'm a professor who does a lot more than just research. So I have to teach, I have to teach classes and, uh, you know, grade stuff. So sometimes that's not very chill. Uh, but I actually feel like, generally speaking, my job is usually pretty chill. Uh, it's, it takes a while to get used to teaching um, to the point where you know, you can stand in front of people for four, okay, <laughs> where you can stand in front of people for four hours in a day just talking off the top of your head at slides that you made, you know, four years ago or whatever. Uh, but I think that um, generally speaking, you just sort of get comfortable at it and it's easy, so. Fun times. Yeah. Uh, if these are on a slide, do you mark X and Y axis, or is it easy to find them? So, uh, answer the... Um, oh, can they see that? Let's see. Uh, I don't think you can see it. There's another panel. Let's see. Um, chamber view. Stage control. So... Um, you should be able to see it now. There's a stage controller, and um, it actually records X, Y, and Z right here. Also, the rotation, the tilt, and the working distance, how far. And all those things are captured as metadata and included in the, a text file that goes along with the image. So we don't really need to do anything to record that information. It's already done. Um, the only problem with that is that uh, if I take the samples out of the stub holder and move them into a different stub holder, then the X, Y, and Z positions will all well, change. Yes. So it only works as long as I keep them in the carousel. Um, but if I'm going to send them off to a museum because we're collecting something as a specimen, 
I probably would find a way to mark where it was on the slide. Um, or I could mark where uh, like zero is on the slide on the side, like I could put a vertical line uh, where north would be or whatever. And then uh, when I put it back in, I could put it back in at that position on that particular carousel number and I probably could get it close enough that I could find it again. Yeah, they're on stubs, but the same idea is the case. Um, in a light microscope, if we're looking at something and it's on a slide, on a glass slide, usually what you use is something called a diamond scribe. So it's a little piece of a diamond like you'd find in a record needle or something, but it's attached where an objective would go on the microscope. And then you raise the slide up until the glass is touching the diamond. And then it has a little knob you can use to turn it and it will create a circle. We'll actually cut a little divot in the glass um, and then that will leave a mark that people can find again and so um, there's also some tools that you can use to sort of spotlight uh, where you were on the slide but people usually start by putting that on there um, when I'm doing it I don't actually have a very good diamond scribe I have a very old one and, also uh, a Lacosaria? Yeah, it's a Lacosaria. I think it's a different species. But, yes, it looks different. Um, so I usually just start with a Sharpie, and I just jam a Sharpie down on the cover slip uh, next to, kind of close to, but not on top of the sample. <laughs> and then uh, and then I send them off to, co to my colleague, Mark, uh, who has really nice uh, specimen circling tools because he's a professional taxonomist. <laughs> And uh, he puts all the the, uh, the circles on this, the, sli the slides, and they sends them off to the museum. He's got friends at the museum, uh, so he can actually get the um, ascension numbers, and he, he knows all the uh, paperwork for that end of things. You zoomed in really close. <laughs> Your search is going to be very, very long, <laughs> at the, even at that scale, probably. But we're looking for a tiny... I know, one. I know, I'm just telling you. <laughs> it's tiny, but... Not that tiny? Probably not that tiny. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the follow. Grins piles. Grinsy piles. Grinsy piles. Is that one? This one? Or is that a chrysophyte? I, I'm thinking it's a chrysophyte, but we can spy on it. <gasps> no. I don't know. No. Oh, it's a little tiny Olicocyra. That's the valve view of an Olicocyra. I want to change this one back. If you want to take a picture. I don't know that we need a picture of it. Oh. <laughs> if it was our mystery diatom, then, then, yes. then we would want a picture. For sure. Top view of an Olicocera, eh. <laughs> we can find a better one. So every stub on here, and there's seven in seven in the carousel, is the same sample uh, that we just prepped seven different times. Well, I prepped them. So they're uh, they're all full of the same stuff. So if we don't find what we're looking for on one, we can just move to the next. There's a little bit of crusty stuff in mm -hmm. this one. Let's see. Anna wants to know, will you still be here to entertain me in an hour? Yes. We'll, we're always here to entertain you, Anna. That's, that's primarily why I stream. I think, you know what? Anna could use a pick-me-up in her day. Uh, I feel like there was a question that I missed from, uh, here it is. Did you put streaming on your research as part of some outreach aspect uh, of a grant or just purely for fun to educate people? Um, well, to answer that question, I would have to say that... Same one? You can take a picture of that one, though. It's got the, uh, yeah, the spines are interlinked, so you can see how the linking works. Um, the uh, original intention was to build a big enough of an audience 
that uh, some of it could be used for, for grant outreach um, capacity. Actually, this would be a good thing to try to stigmate on those little openings. These ones? Yeah, I think there's enough detail there that you could probably do better. Yeah, give it a shot. Ah, that's not what I meant. Okay. <laughs> ah. No. So try to get it in maximum focus first, and it, it may be there already. Oh, that's maximum. That's good. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Wow, I think that's... <laughs> that's good. Yes. And then... Um, so now I go to this one, yes? You'll probably need to zoom in to stigmate it better than that, actually. Oh, wow. Look how pretty they are. It's got, uh, like, spider web coverings over the pores. Those are some of my favorite ones. Yeah, and then just uh, click the stigmation button. Yeah, and then play with those knobs. Ah. <laughs> Oops. It can't get no. worse. It can only get better. Ah. We'll get it back to this point at least. Around there? Nope. Yeah, that looks good for that one. Try yeah, the other I think one that's. <laughs> Somewhere right in there. There's a trick to stigmation, which is getting closer doesn't help. You actually kind of need to be a little part of that. <laughs> Lean back a little bit, and then <laughs> you'll be able to see the no. differences in the focus and the contrast a little bit better because you're super zoomed in. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it's good. Somewhere around there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and then zoom out. Now you can zoom out, or you can <laughs> stay zoomed in if you like. We can take a picture of the. Uh, so to answer your question again, sorry, um, originally I thought I would build enough of a sort of a following that um, that I could use it for broader impacts, I could talk about research, and also if we get a grant funded, um, I can use it as a platform to interview the scientists on the team, and we can talk about the research a little bit before, you know, while we're still collecting data, and I sometimes do interviews with scientists that are on projects with me or some that aren't and um, and I think that it's uh, a nice outlet for them to talk about their research um, to people because I think one of the problems is that a lot of our outreach doesn't actually get out to the general public very well mm. um, it, it goes you know to Twitter as a link or it goes to Facebook but both of those groups are like for me, most of the people that I follow and that follow me it's on Twitter... It's still a closed loop, it's basically. It's a very closed loop of scientists who follow me and not a whole lot else. So they don't really interact with the public very well. I mean, you can get it out there and the other scientists can see it, but it's not really Not the general public. To the general public, yeah. So my intention is to build a decent following and then uh, I will... And I think we have started to include it on grants that we've written in the last year. Um, I started streaming in like July, not really, didn't really get going um, strongly at it until August, but, um, and then, so we've almost got uh, 2,000 followers in less than a year. That's pretty good, no? It's pretty good. Yeah. So I feel like those are numbers that we could use to showcase outreach a little bit better, and ultimately I think as that continues to grow, it will make it easier uh, for us to use it as a broader outreach sort of component. But what I would say, though, is, so that's like the, you know, there's, there's always a, um, a purpose behind doing the science. You know, it's also fun. It's also fun to be able to share it with people. And I think that most of the time I focus on having fun sharing it with people. But I feel like there's also an agenda, like a long-term agenda, that makes it so that I could use it 
um, for actual grant purposes, for actual outreach purposes, and um, I think it's it's more defensible um, to my chair or anyone else to say, oh, I put in you know four or five hours a week doing outreach that hits you know X audience. And one of the things that's really nice about Twitch is that one, the videos are automatically stored so people could watch them later uh, and then I can archive them to YouTube easily but also um, it gives me all the metrics so I can see who's watching how frequently they're watched and I feel like that's a good way of yeah it's all like a sire again but I think it's a, a different species it's very short this yeah part. it's short and it also has those spider web uh, pore coverings which pore do you want which what which pore which pore do I want? Yes. Are you going to zoom in on one of them? Yes. <laughs> I, I think it's good to have a whole field of them, actually, but um, rather than just one. But you can pick. So like around Have here? your pick. Get the one that you like the best. Well, this one looks like a fish, so I like it, but <laughs> I don't know. That's perfect. <laughs> also, you can see the spine connectors here yeah. as well, so you can get it really sharply into focus. That's not very good. I mean, it could be better, I guess. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. It could always be a little better. Yeah, mm. I think you need yeah, to also auto brightness contrast, but slow the speed down to seven and then hit it. Get the picture composed and then do it. I think it'll stand out okay. Okay, there. Then hit auto brightness contrast. I think part of the problem is it's just a little bit uh, monotony, low contrast. Um, let's see. Uh, you just read between 6,000 known and possibly 100,000 different kinds of diatoms out there. It's actually probably closer to, well, most taxonomists estimate that the true diversity of diatoms, like if we ever figure it out, would be closer to a million. So 10 times what you're, or 100 times what you're talking about there. Um, How do you estimate the um, possible... Oh species out there. So the way that they do that is they look at how many species that they thought was one species are actually like a, a bunch dozen of them. <laughs> and then they look at how fast those have been separated now that we have new tools. So for example, somebody looked at, uh, Evelyn Pinsel looked at um, Pinularia borealis. Just We would just used to call it borealis. And she found 20 cryptic species in that we used to call borealis just in one site uh, and so think about that yeah. you take one species and you turn it into 20 species and you already have a hundred thousand species and you multiply that you know By what I mean? 20? Yeah. Do you account for the ones that haven't been described or discovered? Yeah so I mean their estimates are usually just on a napkin right? They're yeah, just yeah. guessing uh, but, but I think that those estimates include uh, living and fossil species and the, the idea is there's probably a lot of fossil species that we just haven't even seen and I would actually argue that uh, so two years ago or I guess it was last year we described a new genus from these materials um, from uh, from Lake Idaho not these particular samples and we saw something else on Wednesday of last week that's possibly a new genus so uh, and it's multiplying very constantly. Likely, yeah, it's very likely going to end up, you know, expanding very rapidly. So the numbers are very high. Uh, Dangling wants to know, does the fan in the back work? Yes. Do you, are you hot? Do you want me to turn the fan on? I'm good. Okay. I don't know. Are you good? I'm fine. Are you hot? Would it help you there watching if I turn the fan on back there? <laughs> Would it make you feel cooler? I do need to get one for my apartment, I think. <laughs> you do? Yeah. 
Same here. This one is quite outside my field, so it definitely helped the region. See, there you go. That's it. Uh, Marmot says, I've been so grateful to see scientists share their stuff on here. It's actually fun for me to share, you know, what we do. And also, sometimes we just have, we look at fun things on the SCM because the SCM is a way of experience the world in a very different fashion than people usually get to see it. So we've looked at everything, bugs. I've got some uh, cat whiskers in my uh, oh. backpack from uh, Devil and Mrs. J, another streamer, sent me some of her cat whiskers. Um, and I would have put them on today, but uh, I re really need to get some of this work done. And, uh, and I've got a backlog of things that need to be done. See the nice fish? It does look nice. So uh, I thought I'd start by seeing if we could find some more of this little guy for the Wednesday stream. I actually have a whole bunch of Idaho geological survey samples and um, Tanganyika samples. I've got a ton of actual Oops. like research that needs to get done. It'll be okay. Do I do, should I do this one again? You already took the picture, right? Yeah. No, it's fine. You can move on. Um, so it's actually fun to be able to share. You're here for Micah and Mallory. Well, uh, <laughs> and, still, and the stone ASMR. Um, Mallory is an AFK. Mallory is in the lab working as she should be on her presentation for Friday, I believe. And yeah, the shape was more or less what we would call one thing Pacific, but the um, so the skeletal structure we thought would be this probably would be called the same thing, but when you look at the DNA, um, she came up with like I think 20 different things. So I think that research is out there. I shared it on Twitter at some point, and then she was uh, she did a Diatom Web Academy talk, which I still haven't seen yet. Um, but I think that was the subject of it, so you could definitely check it out there. Um, and but she's if a, we only have the like the fossil. Right, if record. you only have a fossil, you won't know, right? Yeah. So, and Evelyn is a postdoc right now in Andy Alverson's lab at uh, Arkansas. Hey, we're being raided. We've been raided by a Michael raid. Code Spells is raiding with a party of nine. Thank you for the raid. Welcome in to the channel. We are looking at some six million year old diatom fossils from a lake in Nebraska, but the lake is gone and all that's left is ash and diatoms. And so we're ignoring all of the ash particles and <laughs> we're looking for the diatoms. And uh, this is a graduate student working in my lab, Laura, Hi. and she's here getting experience using the scanning <laughs> electron microscope. And uh, eventually she's gonna be a wizard at it uh, she's halfway to wizard status right now. Right? <laughs> Getting there. <laughs> and, uh, like once a week for, I don't know, the last two months or something, we've had Laura in here on the SEM with us. We skipped a few weeks when things got busy. Okay. Are you being systematic in your search? I'm trying to. Okay. So I can tell you some things to help, which is uh, if you click like right in the middle at the top. Right here? Yeah. It'll move up one half of a page upward, right? And there. if the scale bar is always the same size and you're always clicking in the same spot, mm -hmm. it'll just move like a grid, right? Uh -huh. And then you can just move over two clicks, move down, and move then, over two okay. clicks, move up. And then you can be really systematic, right? <laughs> For the most part. Yes, because it's round, so right. it's hard. The stub is round, and yeah, it's kind of hard to get all the coordinates, but I usually try to get the scale bar to sit right at the same size. So like right when it switches between 100 and 200 or 150. So the scale bar at the bottom will tell us the scale in microns or micrometers.
and it could also be that some of the samples have more diatoms than others because yeah i don't know this one yeah you can feel free to zoom over to another stub there's uh there's seven of them to choose from and i want us to just get stuck on one <laughs> But also, I want you to have the freedom to look around, you know? <laughs> I think I'm almost ready to go to the next one. Oh, magical raid. Oh, okay. I thought it was a Michael raid. What's it's a, a Michael raid? raid? I don't know what a Michael is. <laughs> uh, how is species defined for diatoms? Is it general... Uh, Which university am I working at? Indiana State University. I will talk about uh, how you do species here in a minute. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Are those ones we already looked at? I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out. And uh, Saturn 7, hello. This is, yeah, Indiana State University in Terre Haute, Indiana. Uh, we like wizards. Oh, I like wizards. Oh, Evelyn is on tomorrow for the... Oh, it's good for us to talk about it now, then. That's why I haven't seen it. I knew it was sometime, I just didn't realize it hadn't arrived yet. It's the inside view of an Ah. And Henry Hook, hello. Have I learned anything interesting today? Not yet. We're working on it. Okay, so, um, was a question by uh, Andrew Vaughn, which is, how is a species defined for diatoms? Um, there's a bunch of answers to that. There's sort of like a, there's all kinds of different types of species. This is actually a pretty cool view. Lindavia, of that, that no? Thing. It's an internal view of a cyclotella. Ah, cyclotella. Cycloteloid. Um, but we probably do want a picture of that. Okay. See the, uh, yep. I'll try to get this one. Mantiflora portula are visible. So, the, um, it's a combination of, well, it depends on what you think of as a species, but most of diatom species is uh, determined by their skeletal structure. Possibly that's not a good idea, but it's still what we've been doing. Um, and definitely for the fossil world, that's, that's how we do it. So we don't have anything else to go by. But um, most typically it's combinations of characters. So you can usually get things into genus, for example, based on like for example, I can tell this is cycloteloid um, because one, it's circular. Two, it has uh, it has mantiflora portula and costi and alveolar chambers. So these, these really These are particular, these shadows, or are there these ones? Those are the alveolar chambers there, and those shadow things. I'm not sure exactly what they are. They're thin bits of silica, so I'm a little confused by what they are exactly. Um, but, uh, like the room of Portula should be somewhere on a costi, and hopefully we'll find it if we look closely. Um, but that will put it into cyclotello. Well, it would have put it into cyclotello, but I'm not sure. Cycloteloid. We've been calling them <laughs> cycloteloids because they actually changed the definition of cyclotella. And there's some things that were already in cyclotella that don't fit the description of cyclotella anymore, and nobody bothered to put them into a genus. So uh, they just got stranded, as people think they're cyclotella, but they probably aren't cyclotella. But this might actually be a cyclotella. It's, it's hard for me to tell until I've actually seen all of the characteristics. But it's usually some combination of, of characters that allows you to define it as being a species when those characters are different enough. Um, part of the question is what what's different enough? Um, and that's where the, things get a little yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's basically where things get a little bit difficult to, to determine. So some people think that they need to be, like they can't be interbred, that's like a biological species. Some people think that they um, that they have to have like two definitive features that are different than other organisms um, that are in the same genus uh, some in some cases they just have to have like unique characters so like in here these things are really weird these things yes perfectly I, aligned and everything I think and just in just in one half so yeah I don't they're know. in one half so this is like a cyclotella like in the Meningineana family but 
because uh, I think there's a transverse undulation here. Um, so I think this is the one that we saw before from the outside. And okay. you can see there's the Ruma portula. It's mm -hmm. on a costi, which would and put it... And that's uh, cyclotella thing? It would put it in cyclotella, except for I think those are areoli. We can and zoom in and check yeah. what they are. If they're areoli and they're on the valve face, cyclotella can't have that. So this is where we're stuck because it doesn't fit into an existing genus. But this feature is pretty stable and usually puts us in cyclotella. So it's like that would normally make it a cyclotella. So how do we name this one for the sake Cy of saving the, <laughs> the picture? Cyclotelloid. <laughs> and I don't know which species it was. Uh, I think probably two, but maybe, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> it's just, just throw a name on it. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out later. So I want one of these ones. Yes, the cyclopart and cyclotella kind of reveals the shape. And that's the way that uh, good taxonomic names are typically. They tell you something about the shape of the organism. So um, I try to use, when I name species, I try to use that as my technique as well. I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know what you're looking at either. Uh, you might I think be too I messed close. it up. <laughs> too close. See the oh. scale bars in nanometers? I think we're a little too close. Um, I'm not even sure that those are... Something? Uh, ...areoli. I'm not sure what they are. But I don't know that we're going to get a better view of them from here. I mean, that's the room in Portula, so that one's easy. Okay, that's the better... Nope, that's worse. I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty good. You can't get everything in focus at once because we're so close to it. Um, you've only got uh, less than a micron's depth of field where we were. So these are the ones. Yeah, I don't know if we can see any sort of a structure coming through on the no. other side of them. So. Do we want a picture of this part? Nah. We got it in the previous one. As good as we're going to get it. Yeah, the name Cyclo. It's actually C-Y-C-L-O. Actually... Oh yeah, Pacific spelled it for us. Tells us that it's a round thing, right? Like a wheel. And I think everything we've seen today so far has been a round thing. Yes, nothing of the benthic ones. Although that might be benthic thing right there. In the this one? Uh, it's gone now. <laughs> I'll get it back. <laughs> <laughs> this one? Yeah, maybe Yunosha? I don't know. Or it could just be a piece of junk. We'll find out when you zoom in instead of out. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I do that a lot. <laughs> it's a piece of junk anyway. <laughs> it's fine. Sometimes confusing which way is in and which way is out. Not very intuitive. <laughs> It's not as easy as righty tighty lefty loosey. <laughs> the wheels on the microscope do not go round and round. <laughs> well, probably not. I'm going to let you hunt for more diatoms, and I'm going to change the uh, humidifier, okay. dehumidifier. I'm going to do Mallory's job. Also, I mean Machine Rex. We could put the microscope on a bus. That would work. Uh, I got a message from Rihanna here. What's she saying? asking me about work stuff. You know, always with the work stuff. This one's a really small one. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the same one we were just looking at. I think that's just the um, outside view of it. And when they get smaller, they lose the transverse undulation. You know, it's not empty. Just nobody turned it on. Oh. And. The fun and everything. Now we have a fan. Our number one fan. This one might be a little bit covered. Yeah, it's got clay on it. It's an internal view of that same one you just had an external view of, I believe. It's so small. Yeah. They range very small size. What did you find us? I'm not sure. Maybe the same one, I think. Uh, I think it's an inside view of an olive sarah. There's a ring list. Why? Oh, Rihanna started talking. Oh. You know, asking me questions about work stuff while I'm trying to screw around <laughs> and work. Rude. Actually, this is a. Uh, oh, you're still on the same segment. Yes. This is a classic example of how I work. I just sit and watch other people work. That's my. Uh, that's what I do. When you get old, just watching other people work is working. It's exhausting. Ah. Uh. Thanks for the follow, Easy Musica. Oh, somebody asked a question and I missed it because of the window closing. What's all the fuzzy stuff that doesn't look like anything between things? Uh, ash? It's either clay or some ash. Is that Mallory? No. Do you know that uh, Dangling was in here? Really? And she you said she up. only comes only comes here for you. I miss her. And then she left. Oh, what's this? Where did um, you find us? I'm guessing some sort of penal area, but I have to. And there's a baby one. What's going on, girls? I've got to witness lab discourse. This is perfect. You are messing with us, right? No. So the 200 samples... The, okay. There's 900 samples in there, and we're trying to get through them all, but we only have, like, probably two or 300 organized right now. That's fine. I know. I told I told you. But hear me out. No, that's not even the real problem. Hear me out. That's not even the real problem. You know the 200 that you want them to get out? Yes. They have not found all of them within the boxes that I have. I have 800. So some of the ones at the top will be in the stuff that you have, that you're making slides from, because we don't actually have slides. Oh, the that stuff go that I'm that making far. slides from? Yeah. Okay. Because so our, our slides okay. didn't go up that far. 
Yes. What about, they have some stuff Hello, towards the everybody. bottom that are missing as well. <laughs> there you are. Oh, they can literally see us standing. Yeah, they can <laughs> see everybody in the room right now. They oh, yeah. See. Is Dangling not in here anymore? I don't know if she's here anymore. Hey, Pacific. Aww. Mama Bon Bon, hello. What about Micah? <laughs> Has Micah been here in a while? Micah usually comes in, but he's not here yet. Mike King. Oh, wait, when did you start? At 2. Oh, yeah. That right happened. on time. Like I always do. <laughs> You could be a poet. Hey, she's in here. But oh, breaded shrimp. Malice. Yeah, that's her. Breaded shrimp. It's dangling. Where is her name? Where's breaded shrimp? Oh, uh, Pacific one. Plankton said add in her. Oh. Oh, she, she must be message. here. She, she might not be here. No, you can only you can only like add someone if they're here. She's probably just not paying attention. Understandable. She so does look, look at this. Look at our squad. Yeah. What's up? What's Karen. up? It's like the cover of a. Okay. Uh, well, not really, but so what if they have stuff that are missing towards the the bottom of the list? They yeah, have they have like ten, water several water? missing yeah. towards yes. the bottom of the list. That we don't have anything. For? So they say we don't have anything for, <laughs> and they've gone through all eight hundred, and they're in sorting it right now. They already sorted what they have. How many do you have? Less than a hundred, right? Are they all, they all together at the bottom, or are they just missing from our samples? See They're that where the size measurements are messed up. They are randomly missing. There's like big uh, chunks. There up are at the numbers top. Uh, like them, but they have different measurements. Oh. So we only chose one. How slightly works. off? No, like off, off, like. Um, uh, pull out the nearest one. Okay. Yeah, because these are estimates anyway, aren't they? Yeah, but they usually are close. Okay. Just get, oh, okay, because if there were like a few missing, eh, but like there's, they have less than a hundred within the two hundred that I was supposed to get. They have less than a hundred of those? I don't know. It might be Isn't it? It might be a hundred. If you haven't filled up a box, it's less than a hundred. But we have Just both there. boxes filled partly. Both box, what? We have both partly filled. Oh, did you leave spaces where they were? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what you guys were doing. Okay. I thought you just we're randomly filled out boxes. We're not order. Okay. So yeah, just try to find the next closest sample to it. If it's something that's randomly missing, like there's everything else, but there's not that one that was on the list, and then make a note in the list. Did you send them the actual Excel file? They have it. Okay. Yeah. So make a note in the list for which sample you have, no, I just and which sample was missing or whatever, okay. and then we'll try to work around that. Okay. Okay. Oops. And then some of the ones at the top will be in what should be in what Mallory has. Okay. I'll just. Like um, above 30 something, probably. Oh, uh, mine aren't organized. Uh. Yeah, you can organize the ones she has as well. Oh, no, I'll do Mallory. it. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're like sitting in there threatening me. They're, they've actually threatened to hurt me many times today. What? Yeah, they, ever, they, they yell at me you. and they hit look. me. I gave what? You a look. They've hit me. She gave me a look. That's about it. <laughs> it was threatening. Look giving. That's where we are. Oh, my ball. What are you guys doing? Is this Nothing. One? Okay. Nothing. Sounds like you're hiding something. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> we're just gonna sit, sit back here and go. We're Hi. entertaining the uh, the people. Entertaining. Hello, everybody. We're entertaining the people with our plentiful fossil diet. Is Pacific baking anything today? Did you eat your salad? No. Okay. I was gonna ask you if you gave me my fork back. Oh, I. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm what gonna see you every day, so I can bother you, but. Uh, the fast snake says no more Slavic squat, which I guess is what somebody was doing. That was me. I don't <laughs> like standing. I have weak knees. <laughs> and, uh, Pacific says she's not baking today. Aww. Pacific, what's wrong with you? We're gonna have a, a cookie baking contest. I need to buy. I'm so, I'm gonna go to the grocery store this evening. Actually, just gonna buy like a, a block of Pillsbury dough to. with the cookies and you just chop it and then put them. You on guys there. won't know. From what I remember, they were really buttery. We probably won't. So <laughs> I just that? remember yours being really buttery. Oh my god. <laughs> Give me Vietnam flashbacks to Levi. <laughs> guys, I have a cookie block. Uh, well, two cookie blocks. <laughs> two years ago, a master's student told me my cookies were slightly too buttery for his preference, and I haven't been able to make good cookies since. <laughs> he messed you up. True story. It's a true story. <laughs> I didn't make it up. I spent a whole year telling her her hands were ugly and it didn't bother her at all. I know, but the cookie thing. <laughs> <laughs> Cyclotella. PTSD. For, every time cookies are in front of me, I feel like I start to eat double. Cyclotella. 
psychoteloid. This psychoteloid. Yeah. What kind? He doesn't know. That's why it's a boy. No, if you add the oid, that means that he doesn't know exactly what it is. Oh, it look looks like a cyclotella, but maybe not. Cyclotella distinguenda. That's why he says naviculoid. Hmm. I always wonder why he said that. And gomphony moid. He I didn't could, know that. He could say gomphony mask. Yeah, oid means like close to but not quite. The cyclotella oid. Because film. that's not a cyclotella. The film you was see? Kafkaesque. That's not a cyclotella? This thing right here. That's the that's the exit point, the outside external expression of the rim of portula. There's the mantle photoportula right there, like all the way around. And then it has areoli on the valve face. It's not cyclotella? Is it Lendavia? You sure? You sure it's not Lendavia? It's not either of those things. Star Somewhere in the middle. No, it's six million years old. It doesn't have a genus. What? Yeah. Well you don't have to bring age into it. Yeah, it doesn't have a genus. <laughs> People were calling it cyclotella. You can't laugh because I can't keep a straight face. It used to be called cyclotella, now it's nothing. Uh, okay. It's it's a orphan species. Like Pluto. Yeah, like Pluto. <laughs> like Pluto. It's forgotten about. Yeah, oh, no longer a planet. It's like that. Right? And you just told me it has no name now. It's so. not. It has a name. It's, the Pluto it's Pluto not a right name. Pluto. Planet? Yeah, that's and in planet. fact, it does have a name. It's Pluto. That's a planet. Dwarf is a bit of a. Isn't that like a slur? Dwarf. It is a slur. Mm -hmm. Pluto just hasn't cleaned its orbit yet, that's so true. that's why it's not a planet. It hasn't finished. I thought it's because it was tiny. cleaning it. It's actually. Does it like? Is it not like on the ecliptic, so that's why it's not a planet. I thought what? it was tiny. That's why it's not a planet. It's not the size. What? We talked about this last week. Yeah, I know. We did. Weird. I actually don't know anything about space. Let's just go, wait, isn't that new planet called Kepner? Kepler? Kepler. Uh. <laughs> Kepler. Um, Cyclotelloid? Cyclotelloid. Isn't that an actor? Kepler? Wait, I'm thinking yeah, this is... Yeah, April Kepner? Uh, um... <laughs> I think that's a... Three, uh, More about planets that we don't know. Mm, the more you know. My, uh... Yeah, that Mallory Eleanor. What? <laughs> workoid. Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> What? Lloyd is a shifty guy. Yes. What? That Which Lloyd. One? Can't trust him. Wait, I'll leave. You know, you guys have your own phones. Is the no, I don't think getting so. good over here. I don't know what this is. This is, this is my... What's going on? Fine, I'll turn it's my your own chat. Make sure I can hear it. Uh, we could just call it Johnny. That's fine. Continue. Where are you? There you are. Oh, there I am. <laughs> I'm sure the sound is down. No, I was putting a keeping it on, actually. Just letting you know. Where's your phone, Eleanor? It's an ugly, ugly What kind of, I was what kind of, uh, ugly? What kind of, what kind of band member are you here? I am regular. Like Everybody else has their Kepler phone. Kepler Space Telescope, that's why. I think it's Kepler. more of the Al 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 and uh, Sylvia can sing the planets for you, and also the dwarf <gasps> planets. No and way. she's got a whole song she sings. That's awesome. Well, I'll have her know I can sing a song too. <laughs> Yours is probably not educational in the way that she could. You know. I used to know the 50 States song. The what? I know that song. The, there's a 50 States song. Do you mean from Animaniacs, that one? No. Actually, it might be. Or the Bill of Rights song. You mean from That's Animaniacs? That's a good song. I know. You know There's what? a Krebs cycle rap. There's a Krebs cycle rap? I can you hear that? Yeah. I can like you do a Krebs cycle rap? I can't do it, but <laughs> it exists. The Krebs cycle the element is that's something that you learn Did you learn the element song? No, I know um, okay. the preamble. I, that's what I was going to say. It does look a little Be bit the like people, the people, United United States. States. That one? Of the United States. <laughs> what are you doing? We the people of the United States. In order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, and provide for the world. common defense, <laughs> no, you skipped it. Well, <laughs> and, and secure the blessings of liberty <laughs> to ourselves and our posterity. Do or dead. Junk. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, yeah. establish justice, and ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Oh my god. Yeah. We've got. Uh, See, but there's a problem. I don't know the Bill of Rights. 
<laughs> we the people. I want the I want the tranquility. <laughs> <laughs> Just want the tranquility. Forget the rest of it. My singing is flat. Um, I'll have you know. Your singing is flat. I was trying to give her some volume, but she wouldn't let me. <laughs> I'll have you know, I was actually a final contestant on The Masked Singer. You didn't see me, but mm -hmm. I was covered. <laughs> I don't know how the masked singer works. I can sing Olivia Rodrigo for everybody. I think you can. That's not it. Good for you, Gazelle. Brabeck, um, thank you for following me. Oh, you look at that. You got roasted for your I did, Which one? I did get a little lightly toasted. I'll take that. Someone said it looks like oh, a which surface stuff? of Mars. I Just go with one. <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> also, I love how you just go, I don't want to know anything about space, while well, Eleanor over here, like, we're thinking about astronaut, and you're well, like, I, I don't know. Space. Do you know, know anything about politics? You should know all the planets. Me neither. <laughs> and planetoids. I, why, what's the point of that? I'm not visiting any of them. I'm dying on this one. Oh, you found your pinnalaria again. Only this one's clean and broken. I don't see you now. Not enough pixel to make up your faces. What? That's good. Makeup's a little... I'm looking... Hold on. You want to change places with me? No, I don't want to be closer. Okay. I'm trying to work on my summer tan. Dude, do you think... I wonder if I got a little bit of a... I went running yesterday. A little bit of more tan. <laughs> yeah, it's there. It's there. <laughs> Still has the fishnet look. Holy, you have fishnet tan? Oh my tan? god. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's yeah. actually cool. I want to copy it's that. Not that's a new trend. <laughs> Laura's making a new trend. Oh my god. I kind of think it's stylish. That's no. So fun though. People if you could get a pattern on. like lizard scales. That would be better than. Oh, Laura, you're a mermaid. I don't know. Yeah, like a mermaid. Oh. Ah. Have we found alien relics Wait, in the SCM of Dyke? No. No, don't. don't it. I believe it. Oh, got it. What happened? We can't cuss. Wait, we cuss. They can cuss. Are they allowed uh, to cuss? I got the family friendly tag on. I prefer if oh. they didn't. No cussing in the family friendly. I just saw Brianna. Did I I haven't swore once this entire time that I've been here, and I think that's something that we should all. It's an accomplishment. Applaud. Wait, you didn't cuss at all like in there? And Eleanor, she yeah, normally has a potty mouth. Oh. Yeah, and no, she hardly ever curses did. on stream. Yeah, Ele Eleanor. Eleanor? All she does is swear I, I and really don't eat sailor. in the left. <laughs> She's eat, like. All she does is eat potato chips. <laughs> I don't know. She shoots sticks uh, out of her wrist. But it's all covered. Well, <laughs> yeah, she does do that. <laughs> Someone said, Have we found any alien relics in the SCM of Dietone? Not yet. We're working on it. It's covered. Mm, a little. Have we found I'm not taking a picture okay. of a covered one. <laughs> You're in charge. <laughs> No. We're <laughs> we're here to let you, you make decisions. No, so I don't have shoot to. Stick out of your wrist. They know about your stick out of well, the wrist. I don't know. Hear me then out. How did they know about the stick in the wrist? Eleanor, I just said it. Eleanor, oh. tell your wrist story. Someone might pin. Someone might like clip this, and then it'll oh, be yeah. immortalized. Like the time I screamed. It's like a. What do you call it? Like the. Someone time clips capsules. me yeah. doing. What did someone clip me doing? What did I say? Just sitting there, I think. No, what's that little no. noise that we used to make? Mm -hmm. I know. That's still our that's noise. That's dead yeah. You know what, Fastnick? The negativity hurts my feelings. I'm not clipping this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Eleanor, Eleanor, tell your stick story okay. real quick. It, do, do, do. There's nothing much to it. But oh, there's something to it. <laughs> this one or the or this one? That's an Alakasaro. Do you mean this one? That's a ash. Me? I was looking at the screen. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I thought you were Trendy putting science your head and on stuff. my shoulder. I was like, Are Ridiculous. you Ridiculous. I was like, Are you okay? I wanted to cuddle. I've like, I, cause I realized this the other day. I do not make physical contact with people whatsoever. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe. I maybe have this one. Yeah, we'll of see. My best friend Let's see. Until after, until it's our tiny. Oh, there's a Ooh, there's a yes. Yeah. Graduating. Mm. That that one's the one that disarticulates. I didn't even think about it. It's just broken in half. Which ones? The ones really? that do that. This That's not Alexa. Like uh, but why? Okay. 
It went too far. Can you go take a picture of that yeah. at your cyclist? Yes, but I... It's um, ah, there it is. 3 o'clock, yeah. 2.30ish. And there's this one. Probably it's something. Yeah, that's something for sure. Looks like maybe a navicula or a nitsia. It's like a face. It's just a piece of something else on it. <laughs> you can see the apical pore fields. I think you need to do this one. A live unboxing. You cut it off? Live unboxing. Yeah. You do? Yeah, I really don't want to because it's broken and I gotta go do it again. Probably. If it's broken, it's broken. Like if the stitch is already broke. Oh, it's probably not. Yeah. I don't think no stitches. Me either. Live unboxing, Eleanor's wrist, do it. I, I don't know. Can you unbox it? No. We love a good unboxing. I don't think people want to see that. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> I love an unboxing. Not that kind. <laughs> we can just stream you taking your cast Did off. Is that what you're saying? Michael? Yeah. So they went. Who is Michael? That's the guy in my apartment. He shares my balcony. Yeah. Well, he wrote it sideways, and I wrote mine, so you can always see. And it says, "I heart you." Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Okay, well, I'm gonna on my lap. Laura signed it. Hers okay. is right here. It's got a sign. Where's mine? It's right here next to. Next to mine. Mm -hmm. It's got hearts. Right here. I was just gonna draw a hook on it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Why are you going to not, not know the hook? No, I this don't. This whole time, Dr. Stone's like, you don't need a hand, we'll just replace it with the hook. Oh, okay. yeah. She okay. wasn't here for two months. No. So, yeah. we'll cut her some slack. No. So, up here, apical pore field. Mm -hmm. Little mm -hmm. tiny openings. Mm -hmm. And then these are costi. This part that comes across. Yeah, and there's a bunch of little areolas. Like and there's another costi. Yeah. That was like... Like it's something. The other one was not very diverse. Yeah, something different. Even if it's just half of it. You have a new thing? It's an old thing, but yeah. That star is that star Syrah? No. No. No, it's actually not. It's not. What is that, that is no, no, it's no. It's Star Syrah. It's something to do with Jesus. I was just Cross, looking at Chris, Chris, Christ. 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 It's not. What is Cross. it? Cross. I need to go. Christ I need to, I need to know what is no, it? it's not a Christ. Christ. What is it? Tell me. Now. I don't know. <laughs> Naviculoid? No. no. It's a fragilarioid. Are you fragil serious? It looks like Star Syrah. No. No. Hmm. Angry. It does look like a Star Syrah. Tell me, it doesn't. It's Star Syrah. No. Star David in the sky. Looks like there's a Star cheese David has six slice. points. What like are you talking about? Looks like a cheese slice on top of it. Star David. It does have a slice of cheese on it. You're right there. That's Swiss. Pretty sure it's not a fire. It's not. I want an artificial arm, but there is no way to reproduce the nerve system yet, so I'll refrain. Hey, do you know when we'll be getting our samples in? I think your soldier just has a metal one. Wow. Do you know when we'll be getting our samples in from Chad? I mean, Doctor Yu. Doctor Yu. Is he considered doctor? Yeah. He's a doctor. Yes, he's a doctor. Dr. Stone used to try and get me to call him Jeffrey. Would you like me to? He doesn't know anything more. The samples aren't here. Okay. His lab is actually like two doors that way. Oh, yeah. You I could go walk, like knock there. on it and yeah, see if he's in there. I don't think he is, though. I'm personally not going to go see him. What's the name? Are you nervous? Are you scared? Are you going? Yeah. Uh, I've never seen the lab. I like seeing everyone. Psych. Plus. Oh, wait. No, no. C. No. C Y C L U S. Uh, bye. What? Bye. Oh, they take their clown car with them when they left. <laughs> now you know why I'm in the SM lab. <laughs> there was something else. Straight up. But now I due think north. I lost it. It's due north. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, it was straight north. I know exactly where it is. Ah, this one. See? Mapping landscapes with my head. Uh -huh. All the time. All the time. Oops. Nope. Oops. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. I lost it. I'll get it. This oh. One. Hey, there's something right next to it, too. This one? 
Or this one? The little round guy. Oh, and this one. <laughs> the cars are so roomy. Yeah, it's a Nitzia. Oops. That's a kind of interesting one. It's in, uh, like, three-quarters girdle view. That's pretty. Yeah, and the stray come all the way down onto the girdle, which is mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Here. Yeah, on both sides. They're curious. It also looks like... Oh, that's just a fibulae. Which yes. one? This the, one? Yeah, those bars coming down from the side uh -huh. of the fibula. Fibulae. What are they for? <laughs> or we I don't, don't know. know what they're for. <laughs> they're like costi that haven't finished growing. Okay. Partial costi. Yeah, let's hiss at the Nitzia. Boo. Go home, Nitzia, you're drunk. <laughs> Today I tried to get a little sun, but there was too much shadow from them. I mean, the girls seem to like it. Because it's not on them. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> I don't think the Nitsi is blurry, though. We haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah. I need to work on getting you to rotate the screen. Yeah, I always feel like I'm going to, I don't know. Break something? Yeah. That's what, we need to get you past that feeling. <laughs> That's exactly what we I need to get over. I'd rather not touch anything. <laughs> That's exactly I'll why. I'll rotate it after this one. More practice, and then you won't feel that way. This is my hydro flask. I like the color of it. Me too. I got this for Christmas two years ago. Ooh, very nice. Two Christmases ago, not two years ago. A year and a half ago. If you like. Because this year is flying by so fast. Last year, I, um, I. I almost got 2,000 miles on the elliptical. Oh, because quarantine? No, I was just running every day, like 10 miles a day. And then um, I couldn't exercise at all this semester. So it's just too busy. Are you getting back to it? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I'm back to running. So I'm only at like five to six miles reliably before I get tired or bored. So, but also we've been, um, rearranging our whole house. Mm -hmm. Carlin bought some new rugs and so we're putting the new rugs into where there were old rugs and taking the old rugs and putting them into new rooms. Uh huh. And so... That involves a lot of furniture moving I guess? Yeah. Everything has to come out and then it gets cleaned and then everything gets back in on top of the rug. Well that's a workout all on itself. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like I just sometimes I don't have the energy because that's what I've been doing for the last three days. Just totally and we still have two rugs, three rugs that we need to do something with. So we've got two more rooms to decorate at least. Let's see. Uh, let's see. It looks like it's split in half. That's because it is. It is, yes. <laughs> All diatoms where you can see the inside or the inside and the outside are split in half. This one. Yeah, that's the same diatom, it's just a small version of it. Do we want a picture? Sure. Okay. This part is really particular, yeah, no? The, it's the depressed side, mm -hmm. the downward side of the tangential undulation. Um, what's the highest resolution in this microscope? Uh, access, ask a scientist gaming. We can actually ramp the resolution of the image up really quite high. Uh, 
I'll wait until Laura starts taking this picture, and then I will try to show you. That's better. Oh, I don't think you can see the menus, but I can read them to you, so. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, um, if I go under SEM image parameters, we can, right now it's saving the image at 1280 by 1280, but we have options of uh, all the way up to 16,384 by 16,384. That's the maximum resolution of the image. And um, the problem is uh, it takes three minutes to collect an image right here at 1280 by 1280. And if I take it up to um, 16,384 by 16,000. Seven 16, hours. Yeah, it'll take seven, almost eight hours to take one image. And I don't want to wait that long. No one has that kind of time. <laughs> no. It's a whole day <laughs> no. worth of work. That's a whole day of it collecting one image. So, um, but that is the maximum resolution we can get. Um, we're at the current maximum live resolution that it can produce, which is 12, uh, 1024 by 1024 for the live image. But for picture taking, it can go on forever. Uh, I mean, a 16,000 times by 16,000 times resolution image is monstrous in size. Um, so I found a nice middle ground at 1280 by 1280 for three minute photos that are at the speed seven. Um, of course, you could lower the speed settings, but then you lose resolution. So you're just wasting your resolution. Um, if I j jack up the speed to uh, the lower the speed to 8, which increases the, um, and increase the, uh, or decrease the spot size, basically we could get a higher resolution image than this. Um, if you're asking what's the maximum magnification, and that's what you meant instead, um, the microscope's magnification, we can get up to about 200,000 times before it starts to get a little blurry um, when it's perfectly stigmated. So right now we're only at about 27,000 times. So, you know, in order of magnitude higher than where we are right now, if we wanted to. Um, it would take a little bit of work to get it perfected. And we probably would need to have some nice clean internal views of some crib or somewhere that we could basically work to get the stigmation perfect, um, but somewhere in that range, so. Chef Ramsey. So this is the same diatom we've been sort of imaging all day. Uh, a little small, a small version of the same cyclotelloid. Uh, when they get a little bit larger, they tend to be a little bit more eyeball shaped, but it's basically the same diatom, I think. The Twitch app just updated itself. During the transmission? <laughs> it's fine. Uh, it's like a rosathidium or something, yeah. We saw that one before, but you should get it. I think we saw only the external view. Ooh. I think there's pork coverings and everything. Fancy. <laughs> Oops. 
looking at there. I'd zoom in on the reefy. Or one of those things. One of these ones? Yeah. Those are the weird. Reefy. Like the side areola we have little partial um, coverings on them. Yeah. That's what you got. I don't know though. I think I made it worse. Do you? Yeah. I don't know but if it's worse. We'll see. The Rafi looks clear. Let's get, like, uh, can you turn it just a little? Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. So we need to turn it, like... Clockwise. This way? Or that way, either way. Just so that it's corner to corner. To maximize the mm. image. It's like 10 degrees or something? If I want it this way. Oh, probably it's like 20, 25, something like that. Try just changing it to 25 and see what happens. Where is it? Where did it go? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Oh. Now it's basically vertical, so you need to go the other way. Um, try 245. It's a lot of turning it did. Yes. Oh, that's, that's good. better. Maybe, I don't know, it's perfect, I think. Good guessing on my part. Yes, because... But for now you need to focus it again, unfortunately. Somewhere between those two. <laughs> Good night, fast snake. I would pick something that has a sharp edge oh. that you can focus on. So I tried on the Rafi, but it looked uglier, I think, after. So So the little pores that have the mouth on them? This one? The next one over. This one? No, uh, towards the wall. Towards the margin. Right this there, one? those ones. They have like a little, like covering on them? Yeah. These ones. Yeah, any of those. I think you probably are what, that's what you want to have in focus. It's, those are super interesting anyway. I don't know. I'm really not seeing anything. <laughs> I think you took it out of focus. <laughs> so double click the box and just get rid of the box. Now just focus on that. Or make the box bigger, one or the other. How the, do I uh, click with the right button and pull? Ah, there you go. I think around there. I 
think we could do better. Oh, we're at 200 nanometers, that's probably why. We're super zoomed in. I think it'll be okay. <laughs> Unless we're gonna go in and stigmate again, I think it's gonna be what we got. It'll be all right. We will make it work. Yes. Do I need to do the black and white thingy? Uh, probably it would help. It's a little dark. Yeah, it's just a little. Probably would help to have contrast. There. This is hard work. <laughs> Pointing at things. Do that. Do this. <laughs> hard working professors. <laughs> it's this in meetings, that's all I do. Doesn't sound too bad. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I, have, I still have a couple of papers I need to work my way through. I've got revisions to give people back this week for two papers. Maybe three. I mean, that's a good sign. It means that they're getting close to being submitted or they've already been submitted and they're getting close to publication. It's a good yeah, not complaining. I guess I'd be happier if I were writing papers instead of just revising them. But That's life. You win some, you lose some. Win some, sometimes I don't win quite as much. <laughs> sometimes I win, sometimes it's a tie. sure about this genus for this one. It's like Acnanthidium. I hadn't noticed this like difference yeah. here. It's like Acnanthidium except I don't think I've ever seen one with no raphe. And then I really don't know what it is. If it's not that, then it's a mystery. Then it really goes into the like mystery pile. Mm -hmm. We should name it Mystery Acnanthidium? I've been calling it Rosithidium, I okay. think. Okay. Because it looks like a Rosithidium to me, but... Um, Not so sure. I don't so know what sure. looks like in SEM. It just looks like a Rosithidium in the light microscope to me. So it's got a bit of a rapey ledge, and then it's got a really strong... Uh, like the gloss of And then... The central area has, yeah, you noticed it's got short striae on one side and no striae on the other, so. Not sure. Do we have this name? No. Yeah, it's right there. Rosithidium. Oh, yeah. I guess we'll just call it that, and then later on I'll try to figure out what it actually is. I'll have to do some detective work, you know, the research part of my job. <laughs> the fun part of it. I like research, actually. Yeah? I find it enjoyable to go learn things. Oh, like Osira? Yep, and there's know. a round one up there, too. Remember this one. Then Wait, do we I'll look at that one already? I don't know. I'll go 
for this one, one and then you want me to remember where that one is yeah okay oh easy it's due east same old cycloteloid Do you want a picture of it? Nah. Too it's similar? <laughs> We've seen a bunch of it. It's this, area. this one? Yeah. It's like I'm covered? Sure. Yeah, it's covered. And it oops, looks like oops. a uh, Star of Syra, maybe? Yeah. But I, I don't we, know. We can probably skip that one. Yes, yeah, it's all covered. We won't get much. I think it's just it. an internal view of one attached to another with the external view. Okay. a round one. I think it's the same one. Look at Where the uh, go? Oh look at Syrah next to it. Uh, this this one? Yeah. Um. You can see the um, Can you zoom in on those pores? Yes. Can you see? Oh. These ones or these ones? The one right in the middle there. Uh, just below that, actually. It's in 6 o'clock. This one? Straight down. This one? Down. Right there. This one? Actually, the this one, one that you had in the middle might also be good. Let's see if we can get that into focus. Uh, I think around here. As good as it can get. Okay. I don't see. I can't really see what the pore covering looks like from that. That's fine. That fragment of Olica Sarah that's right there. This one. Look at the pore coverings on it, though. Very pretty. Zoom in and look at those. I bet they're spectacular. Just a fragment of a diatom. I think that's one the microphone. inside view of the ones that we saw that looked like a spider web on the outside. Uh -huh. I think this is what it looks like on the inside. Cool. What's neat is that that's six million years old and all of the structure is right there. Oh, right, yeah. It's broken, but it's... Yep. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you mean, should you take a picture? I mean, it looks... I don't know. I'm taking it, but... Okay. You were making some sort of a groaning noise. I wasn't sure if that was a... Well, it, I don't think it looks at, it be, at its best, but... We don't have to have the whole diatom to take its picture. We no? just take a fragment, it's fine. If it's pretty? You're still doing your paperwork, Pacific? Why is Pacific not baking today? Well, she said she was doing some paperwork. She's trying to uh, get some sort of a license, I think. So she can use her own plankton net. She needs to file for a permit. Really? What plankton net does she use now? What's the difference? Uh, I don't think there's any difference. I think she's been collecting plankton there for years, and then she just, they told her she needed a permit. Ah. Uh. So.
She's also reviewing her beach survey. So she's doing some sort of uh, uh, science experiment for citizens where they walk up and down the beach. Mm -hmm. do Register survey. thingies. Register thingies, yes. <laughs> I think mostly biological thingies. A baseline beach survey. That's what she says. Sounds very nice. I wish we had a beach here. Well, we have beaches. But not ocean ones. <laughs> <laughs> we have lake ones, right? Yeah. There's a pretty big beach if you go up north. Yeah, on the Indiana Dunes. Mm -hmm. They'll let you swim up there, I think. Do I want to swim in there? Why not? I don't know. Is it clean? Lake Michigan? Yeah. Okay. Pretty clean. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Lake Erie is the one you want to stay away from. Okay. Okay. If you really want the best experience, you should go to Lake Superior. It's the cleanest. The cleanest one? It's got it right in the name. <laughs> it's the biggest and the cleanest. In which state is this one? Is it too far away? Um, it's on the other side. So we can't do anything. You can't easily it? get to it from here. Yeah. Superior grade. <laughs> you alright? Yes. Yeah, between Michigan and Canada. We did the drive through Michigan to get to it, I guess. I guess we could just take a boat over. Uh, <laughs> It's a long boat ride, though, I think. This one's the same one? I don't know what that is. There's, there's a, a round, round one oh, There's here. two round ones over there. Remember those ones. I got them. That is not <laughs> what we saw before. No. It's Hansia. Soil diatom. but you should get a picture of it for sure. Pacific Plankton says she may be in Michigan in the fall. Ooh. What are you doing in Michigan? Visiting? You gonna come walk along our beach and uh, record everything you see there? If you wanna visit, we'll be here. Yeah, in the fall, picking apples. Don't they have apples in California? Sounds very nice. Apple I mean, picking. we have apple orchards right here. In fact, I think on tomorrow or maybe Wednesday, Carlin and Sylvia are gonna go to the apple orchard and pick strawberries. Uh, to the apple orchard to pick strawberries. They have uh, blackberries, blueberries, Ooh, I love, strawberries. I love and, all the berries. Uh, cherries, mm. and I think they also have apples. It's That's the very Ditzler nice. Orchard. I'm gonna give them a shout out. Shout out to Ditzler Orchard. If you're <laughs> around Terre Haute area, you should go there and pick your strawberries from them. What's the strawberry season? I don't know, we have strawberries growing in our yard that are wild, and usually the birds eat them, so we don't even get to them. Uh -huh. But uh, we covered them over because we thought maybe the uh, cicadas would eat them. And we got these nets to cover everything for the mm -hmm. cicadas. still aren't here yet. Um, I've ke I keep seeing pictures of people like reporting where where they are like starting to emerge. Mm -hmm. It's getting like close, but it's not It's actually yet. like all the way around Terre Haute. Yeah, and not Just here not yet. in Terre Haute yet. So is it temperature or what is it? Yeah, it's temperature related. Uh -huh. I think they emerge, but um, I think today being eighty 
whatever, five degrees probably is going to get them moving. Josue sent me some scary pictures of like a door full of them, like yeah, nesting there, up. like molting. Yeah. And I was like, oh my I'm gonna stream God. it if we can get some going. I'm going to stream them emerging and then I'll do some macro so you can see them come out. And, uh, you know, they, they climb up things yeah. very slowly. And they're... I'm a little disturbed by it. <laughs> their dirt forms are kind of interesting. Like their larval mm -hmm. forms are really kind of interesting and don't look a lot like the actual organism. I mean, the body is similar. But yeah, yeah. It looks like a weird worm with legs or something. Yeah, it looks more like a beetle. Like the beetle babies, they are very ugly. Yeah. How do you call them? We have a very specific word. For ugly baby beetles? Yeah. Larva? Just... But larva can be anything. Uh, yeah. We don't have one for beetles, I don't Ooh, think. Oh, we do. They're that ugly. They get their own name. They're so ugly, they have their own name. Yes. <laughs> Picking apples. You pick it fruit. What's the name? Ugly babies get their own name. Yeah, that's what she said. Ugly babies get their own name. Yes. In Colombia, they call ugly babies something else. Jesus. Jesus? Jesus. Jesus? Jesus. 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 Uh-huh. Jesus. Uh-huh. One Chisa, two Chisas. Oh, Chisa. Okay. Chisa is one. That's like an ugly baby bug. Beetle. Beetle. Just the beetle ones. Just like the, the beetle. Um, yeah. Chisa. Chisa. They're very ugly. I'm learning Spanish as we go. <laughs> I don't know how. Words. I don't know how often you would use From that now word. On, I will insult people by call by calling them a cheese. Ooh, that's a bad one. I'm looking the, uh, for right a picture. The this east. one. Yeah. Uh, this one. Yes. Got some round things. Yes. Uh, how do you spell cheese? Uh, okay, like this. Yeah, cheese. Just like it sounds. C H I Z A. Look how ugly. Yeah, those are grubs. We do have a name for that. Okay. We call them grubs. Oh my god. Some Indian cultures, they eat or them. not Indian, but African, how do you call African it? African countries eat them too. My country eats them. Oh, they do? Yeah. Have Raw you, or eaten, roasted. Have you eaten grubs? No, no. You're really. not a grub eater? No, no. Wow. She's a... Just so people see them. <laughs> They're the ugly ones. <laughs> okay. The ugly babies are called Cheesa. Yes. <laughs> oh. I just find the texture might be really disgusting. You're not into it. No, I'm not planning on trying the anything. What about with like a little bit of salt and butter? No. <laughs> There's no. a region in Colombia where they eat like roasted ants mm -hmm. or just the butts because they just have really the they have really big like abdomen. Yeah. Yeah. So that part they roast it with like salt. Have you had that? Yes. It's peanutty sort of. Oh, okay. But it crunchy. has like it yeah, very crunchy. I mean if you're roasting it. Yeah, but roasted they're always they're always roasted. What so. do we call roasted ant butt? Um, hormigas culonas. So it hormigas. just means. Uh -huh. What is hormigas? Ants. Oh, just Colombian ants. Uh, and no, culonas. It's like oh, they culonas. have a big butt. Big butted ant. Uh huh. Oh, that's the name of the food. Um, and the animal. So. Okay. I don't think there's We're a only special. Only referring to it as the food. Yeah, I don't think... It's not think like a cow and steak. No, no. <laughs> Just one word for Just everything. Just one word, big-butted ants that you eat. Yes. But it's just in this particular region. Calepon says, I had dried-out grasshoppers once. I know Mexico eats them. I don't know. We don't have grasshoppers, just ants. You don't have grasshoppers? Uh, yeah, we you don't eat them. You have them, but you don't eat them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Anna wants to know how you spell it. That's a big word. Oramigas? O R M I G A. Uh, no, I can I can spell it. Um, can I write it? Yeah. Uh, 
I don't have special characters, but if you hit that little button in the corner, it will give you them. Ah, no, I don't need anyone. <laughs> Okay. Hormigas, okay. The thing is that in Spanish, the age, the age, uh -huh. yeah. it's silent. So I don't know why we have it, but it's there. That's all right. Silent letters, uh, they just watch over the rest of the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're there to help. We have a lot of H that's in the middle of a word. Just hanging out? Yeah, doesn't do anything. Uh, Ooh, I my don't daughter. Know. My daughter learned um, her spelling, like, last week. All of her spelling words in her spelling word list were words with, like, a silent letter at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like, knee, gnat. Pterosaurus? <laughs> no. I don't think pterodactyl was in the list. <laughs> that That's a little hard for a seven-year-old. But, yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. All the words that have, like, a, a silent letter in the front. Yeah. And then she had to know how to spell it, you know, like... Like a whole list full of silent uh -huh. letter words. Those so are we definitely hard. have them. Yeah. I mean, English isn't any better. <laughs> you have other silent letter words? I mean, besides H? No. So you only have one. Yeah. We've got G, we've got K. You can put a T or a C Sometimes in front of things. Sometimes the P in front of a word P? will be silent, but only like two words have that, so... We have all kinds of words that uh, have silent letters in them. Confusing. Yeah, we've just put it in there to make our language hard for people to, <laughs> to read and write. We're like, guess what? We just do what we want. <laughs> you want to speak English? You got to jump over these hurdles we have. <laughs> you have to know these G. very specific things. We got a silent G and a silent H right in the middle of half of our words. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's confusing, but practice makes perfect, I guess. Well, we can blame other languages. We just steal what everybody else does. <laughs> That's our plan. This one's the cycloteloid. Same one. Bald face. Yeah, same one. I'm seeing a lot of spines on them, though. No, no. They don't have... They. Not yet. But some of the bigger ones have spine pads. Okay, so they so used there to was have... So there was uh -huh. a spine there. Yeah. Anna says that uh, it's also the problem the other way around, that her son tries to skip some letters as silent reading in Russian. Yeah. Like, you never know which one's going to be the one you should be ignoring. Food in the future. I mean, they're not wrong. Yeah. Ant butts, it's gonna be on the menu. Tastes like peanuts? A little. I mean, I like peanuts. I mean, they don't taste bad, I have to say. It's Can you put chocolate on them? You could, I don't know I anyone mean, that's tried. Chocolate peanuts are good. Is that a chrysophyte? I'm not sure. Why are you zooming out instead of in, though? I mean, I'm zooming in. <laughs> I'm There's trying. only one way to find out. <laughs> uh, okay. Whoa. It has a very interesting pattern. Yeah, it's just a ball. I don't... Is this a chrysophyte? I don't know what that is. Could be a chrysophyte. Maybe the pore is on the other side? Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. There are no silent letters in Russian, only silent people. Yeah. You don't have any silent letters? I mean, Russian has all those letters that we don't have. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. M my problem wouldn't be the silent ones. We'd no. be just learning all the yeah, new ones. new characters. Yeah. I mean... Spanish has some characters that we don't have, but... Just one. Just the squiggly tilde? Uh-huh. Do you have anything that hangs under the, under the letters? No, that's French. I know French With does. With the C. Hmm. 
Polish also has characters that hang out underneath mm -hmm. and some that go on top. Well, we have um, accents. Oh, I guess that counts as above, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. We have sounds that you don't have. Well, that's just because we have all kinds of sound technology in our language. We steal all of this sound technology from all the other languages. I think Sedate. every language has uh, every language has different sounds, and that's why we have such strong accents. <laughs> Calathon says Irish feels like half of some words are silent letters, like uh -huh. the word Sean, which is like, you know, twelve characters long, but it uh, can be sounds translated really as like. Little. Sounds it's like very S H A N thing. Sean. Yeah. But it's actually like S I B O U H N. Oh, wow. Well. In Irish. Yeah, somebody's gotten a C with a sedea on it. And then French has accents, of course, as mm -hmm, well. Yes, and they have two different kinds yeah, of accents. You only, only have one? one? You only have one? Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't know what that is still. Very weird, very round. It's a sphere. Sphere a perfect particle. one, yeah. I would guess chrysophyte, like, just because it's a Very sphere. round. It's round? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with sphere, chrysophyte, but I don't see a pore. Mm -mm. So, I don't know. Polish doesn't have enough letters for all the sounds. That's why some Polish words are so long. They're trying to make sounds out of three, uh, four, six letters. That's confusing. Yeah. My favorite is the German. They have and really long words. Yeah, because it just smash words together. Like, you know, like... Their words describe the thing. Right. It's, it's like all one word, though, right? And uh, when, when I was in Germany, I guess maybe it was Austria. It was in Austria. There was a sign... And I took a picture of it on my phone because I was laughing so hard. It was one word with 29 characters. Uh, what I was, was like, it? Uh, I don't remember, actually. Somebody told me. I have German friends. They told me what it was. But I was like, could, what, can't you put a space in there somewhere? I feel like 29 characters in a... We only have like 26 characters in our alphabet. That's like the entire alphabet of a word plus three. Uh, that's nothing. That's one word. That's a long word. Yeah. They win uh -huh. uh, when it comes to word length. And it was on a sign. So it was like, you know. So it was like. It's like watch your step or something. Uh -huh. It was all like one big word. There's an internal view of something. This round. one, yeah. this yeah. one. Let's look at the outside. And view I don't first. know if this is something. Could be. Well, Ooh. that's the same thing we've been looking at. Although that's a nice one. Do we want a picture? Sure. What else have we got to do? <laughs> We're here Look for, for the problem diatom. Who knows if we'll find it? Well, no luck so far, so I don't know. If I, uh, if I have time tomorrow, I might sneak in here and just work on it when nobody's watching. And then I'll go looking just through all these really stuff. Really focus on it. Yeah. I mean, you're really focused on it as about as much as I would be, but... <sighs> I would stop for pictures of everything. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. The E with the accent igu and the accent gra basically change the sound, like a U and an umlaut A in German. Oh, and then Pacific Point said exactly what I said. About what? The accent. A ah. U and a graph. In German, words are associated to create new words. For example, say hospital, they put words ill house together. Krankenhaus. Huh. Ambulance then becomes Krankwagen. And nurse becomes Krankschwagen. Sh 
Schweister. Krankenschweister. Kranken Krankenschweister. Yeah. But they just get longer and longer. And I feel like somebody needs to, like, cut them off. Go home, Germany. You're drunk. Sister. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Schweister is sister. So the Ilhouse sister is a nurse. That's sexist. What about the dudes? If you're a male nurse in Germany, you also called the same thing, or do they have a separate word for the male nurses? Do they call them like crank, crunk and brother? What's brother? Crunk and <laughs> brother? Brother? Yeah. But do they call him Krankenbrother, or do they just call him Krankenschweister, even though they're... Male. Male. And there's nothing wrong with having male sisters. It just seems a little confusing. It doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> well... I mean... Languages are weird. I wonder if that, like, uh, permeates their culture, though, such that, like, there wouldn't be male nurses there, or there'd be fewer male nurses because there's a stigma associated with... Well, I think the name comes from, traditionally, it being women. Yeah, of course. But, I don't know. Crank and Flicker. <laughs> what does Crank and Flicker mean? Oh, a healer. Oh, if you're a guy, you're a healer, but if you're a woman, you're just a sister? That's weird. Oh, it is a diatom. Yeah. It's a little Yenosha. piece of. Yeah, you know sure for sure. Well, zoom in on that. Maybe it's not. I want to make sure. <laughs> the ridges are aeroli, so it is definitely. That's definitely a you know sure. Rather well behaved, you know sure. I don't think you wanted to focus on that. I want to make them. You want to focus on the actual aerial. There. Yeah, they have little. Yeah, they got like a bright boundary around them, and it's in focus. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise, I think you're going to get a little bit of the edge, and it's mm -hmm. like standing sort of up on the side. Just a piece of an uh, Unosha. Hey, Del. We're uh, we're talking about German words that we smash words together to make, and uh, we're looking at diatoms from six million years ago. There's a female Flieger, Fliegerin, but there's no male for Frank. Frankenschweister. I think that's because. Oops. Okay, we'll see you later, Pack. Uh, I think that's because there used to be no men working as a nurse. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Frankenschweister, exactly. There's a good one. How many letters is, how many characters is that, Anna? And what does that word mean? It's it Russian or? It's German. Oh my god. It's a big one. It looks made up. She says uh, 50. <laughs> Only 50 characters. So basically our alphabet twice. Huh. Association for subordinate officials of the head office management of the Danube Steamboat Electrical Service. Excellent. 
And it's just one word. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> I don't know, but I feel like um, it might not fit on a line, like on an actual line in Word. It's a lot of characters. 50. Where do you put the lot. hyphen? <laughs> 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 I don't know how many characters go on a line in a Word document. I suppose that uh, like a typical 12 point font. Uh, it's probably closer to 80. Probably yeah. okay. Uh oh. There's another one. I am not going to try to say that word. Cattle marking and beef labeling, supervision duties, delegation law. Yeah. Sorry to any Germans in the channel. We're making fun of your giant long words. Well, we'll we're trying to learn something new, so. <laughs> yeah. Why do they do this? <laughs> Germans explain, yes. <laughs> Uh, it's a good question. Use spaces, yeah. I mean, quit making it so hard, bro. It's simpler to combine words uh, than to invent new ones, I guess. Yeah. Well, what do they call the internet? Because I'm pretty sure they just call it the internet. Uh, have you seen the news video about the Welsh town with the longest name? I have not. Welsh is another one of those crazy languages. That's what I was going to say. The Welsh are <laughs> like something different. The Welsh, with their crazy long names. Internet or nets. Okay. Zifo, are you German? Or you just speak German? Because you were also talking in French earlier. So. I wish I knew more languages, though. <laughs> Two's not enough? No. But learning more is hard, so I don't know. Well, I've learned all kinds of words today. I didn't think it was that hard. Cheesa. Got it. Oh, uh, you've known German for about 13, 15 years? Okay. The more languages you learn, the easier they become. Okay. Zipo is a, a native French speaker. Do you live near the border with Germany? It's like um, some of my f uh, colleagues are uh, they're in Basel, and so like it's it borders Switzerland and Germany and France. It's like right there in the corner. Oh, you live in Luxembourg. Okay. Well, you also have that. Uh, you're on the border. It's the same one, right? Okay. What's that? It's the yeah, same Yeah, that's one. the internal view, the same one. Your fifth is easier than the second. Well, Anna, once you learned English, they all are easier than that. So, we have uh, all kinds of crazy challenge in our language. And then there's a bunch of words that we stole from the Germans, and a bunch of words we stole from the French, and a bunch of words we stole from Spanish. So. You know, of course it gets easier once you've learned English. It's There's just a, a little bit of pile. everything. It's a garbage pile, so... I'm familiar with how the garbage pile works, and then everything gets easy. Yeah, mongrel language. Exactly, Del. French is your nemesis? You stutter saying electron microscopist. Well, I mean, it's a hard word to say. Sometimes I stumble when I say photosynthesis a lot. It's in the sentence. I was trying to come up with a tongue twister for Je for Dell to say that had photosynthesis in it. I was gonna, I was gonna dream one up because Dell likes to do the tongue twisters on his stream, and uh, I was making them up on the fly with words he was using in his stream. To. Um, to challenge him with. What's that round one? Uh, which one? Bottom left, six o'clock, seven o'clock? This one. Yeah. Crisis fight? Uh, no. No. Alakasira top. Okay. We don't need a picture of Alakasira's mm -hmm. top. What was the thing you had? 
Uh, here. <laughs> there. It's the it's Rosathidium the, yeah. thing. Is it the same one? It's this one something? Mm. No, it's an external view. That'll be good to have. It also still has a Rafi. It's like weird. Yeah, I think maybe it's it's either something different or maybe it's the um, initial valve. Sometimes they make that weird distorted like uh, tumescent middle. That is definitely has a Rafi though. Yeah, interesting. Ooh, I don't know because does it have something here? Yeah, it has. Uh, it does look like it has a stria on because the other and one, shortened stria. The other one didn't have anything. I think it's the same though. I think that other one just didn't have uh, as many stria in the middle. Like it had short ones, it just didn't have the long one uh -huh. in between. I think it's the same one. Maybe it's just an initial valve. Not the same specimen, but the same species. The stolen words, whether they come from German or French, depend on the social clash. Oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you love a fresh tongue twister. We don't want the old stale kind. You're chilling at home listening to Andrew Bird. Good choice. Verifying potential malicious emails. Hearing the vacuum pump holding down the drone in the background. Yeah, that's what we do around here. We got the uh, vacuum pump on ASMR duty. And then, uh, you know, the normal dulcet tones of Laura and I just chatting about <laughs> diatoms in the foreground. The sounds of science. Yes. You showed up just as uh, Pac was getting ready to leave. I wonder if she's filing her paperwork. I need to... Uh, I need to come up with a plan for something to sample for this week. What are you thinking about? I don't know. I haven't made the plan yet. I need to get out. Get someplace new. Collect some samples. You know, so I can look at diatoms and stuff. <laughs> at home. When I'm not looking at diatoms at work, I like to look at diatoms at, at home. home. I got a bunch of work I could be doing, but I feel like I also should be doing some playing around. Both are good. Yeah can't work all the time. Yeah. Not I heard good. it makes you dull. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly cleaning our house. You know, we haven't had any company other than like Carlin's parents for over a year, a year now. Yeah. So like I had to clean up the guest bedroom, then we totally redid all the living room and the dining room. And now we have to go back and I gotta clean up my office. It's just like, you know, we just push the mesh from one room to the next and then... Do that over and over? Yeah, now we're down to just, we're running out of rooms to stuff things in, so... Hey, we got a new follow. We're creeping in on 2,000 followers one of these days here. All work and no play, but when you play with work, yeah. Yeah, I, I was there when you were talking about that on um, Sunday, Dell, about going over to, uh, to a party with friends. We're going to have a party for the lab group. We're going to have the, a cookie contest, very important. There, I, I'm told there will be cookies. Uh, my wife has promised to make ice cream, like homemade ice cream. Yay. And I will be cooking like like a dad on the grill with the hamburgers and brats and whatever else people bring me to cook on the grill. So, and uh, we've got yard games to play. Like uh, I've got the set of coop that I made, which is going to be fun because I don't think anybody in my lab knows how to play except for me now. Yeah, I don't but know. But it's been that a tradition. Really since I built the first cube set that I had, that we play cube during the lab parties. And 
Ty Thompson chat. Hey, Jonathan, how's it going? Um, oh, that's an internal view of that same diatom again. So, no? If you Enough like, of those ones, I don't know. We've seen a bunch of them. Yeah. It's the most common thing we've observed other than the Alcacyra, probably. I haven't found any of the little weird beasties, though. Mm -mm. Death of Barney, hello. How are you been? Uh, somebody was in here the other day asking me about Amber and whether we'd looked at Amber in the SEM. And I was like, there's a person you should talk to, um, which is Death of Barney. And um, how you been? Yeah, it'll be comfy. It'll be a nice family, lab family affair. It should be fun. And, uh, you know, my daughter is there. They'll get to meet my daughter, which I don't think anybody except for Mallory and Rihanna know anymore. Um, you're good. It's a little cold there in New Zealand. Uh, it's getting hot here. Today, almost 90 degrees. Uh, almost, let's see, it was 30 degrees Celsius if you're, uh, if you're in, in non-Fahrenheit world. <laughs> Um, getting warm here. Doing the opposite, of course. Thanks for the follow, Johnny Rocket Fingers. High five for no mask. Yeah. So Laura and I have both vaccinated, and we've got rules in place where we don't have to wear masks if we're vaccinated. If you were watching the stream earlier, oh, what's that? Uh, Mallory didn't have a mask, but Rihanna and Eleanor still had their masks on, and uh oh. Is this no, what? that's the same cyclotella, I think. I think that's the same one. But you should get a picture of that. Um, and I think Rihanna got her shot on Wednesday, so she should be ready by Wednesday. So she can stop wearing her mask. Which one did she get? I think she got, oh, maybe she can't. Maybe she just got the Pfizer and she got the first one. Huh? Mm -hmm. So she'll still be wearing her mask for a little while. And uh, Eleanor's got sticks in her arms until yesterday, so. No shot for her yet. I think she's claiming she will get the shot when she's. Off of the antibiotics. A little bit more healed up. But that's okay. The rest of us don't have to wear masks and we're happy about it. Yes, we are. And uh, Addie is almost done baking as well. I think she will be finished with her mask on Friday. So that will be good. You just got done moving. You're going to unpack your microscope and hopefully start back up on your ID work. Great. Uh, Anna says, I ID Spirogyra based with number of chloroplasts, seven different samples. I put them under a growth lamp, and two weeks later, I have seven different species of Spirogyra. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, New Zealand uses Celsius and mostly standard. Oh, for some reason, everyone here still does height in feet and inches. That's weird. That's a weird combo. Yeah. Uh, I wish we would just switch to metric. I don't know. I, like we should just pull the bandaid off and switch entirely. But uh, the U.S. does not like to change. That's that's our characteristic. One of our primary characteristics as people in the U.S. is they're stubborn. They, and don't, they don't like, like change. They don't like change. You know, it's already we've had the kilometer marking on our like uh, speedometers since I was a kid. We know it's there. All you have to do is read the sign. I mean, what's the difference between looking at the top or looking at the bottom of the speedometer? Yeah. But they just won't do it. So. You can't see us doing it. Yeah. Oh, there would be jobs for highway replacement signs and we could get rid of all those weird wrenches we have. Mm -hmm. You know, just start using all metric wrenches. That's what we need. Uh, 
<laughs> just have those people drive slower. <laughs> uh, they don't follow the signs anyways, Del. I mean, frankly, in Indiana, nobody follows the speed limit signs. I'm always being passed by somebody driving like 20 to 30 miles an hour faster than me. And I'm like, what gives? And I also see people drive right through the, the red lights. They don't follow those at all here either. Um, usually it's like... People do like to go really fast, even in very small roads. They're like, vroom, and it's like, why? Here's the thing. I'll tell you how Indiana drivers are. So if you ever come to Indiana to visit, as long as they're driving on the road, they're way too fast. Or it's like somebody's grandma, she's driving super slow. Uh -huh. But if they go to turn a corner, they turn the corner like grandma. It doesn't matter whether they drive straight on the road going 30 miles over the speed limit. When they go to turn the corner, then it's always like, I'm just going to take this super easy around the corner. I don't know why. I person in front of me goes to turn into a Burger King or whatever, and then it's like, I've got to wait for 30 seconds for them to turn into the thing. Uh. Why? Why does it take them so long to turn a corner? I don't know. But uh, super fast down the roads, every turn, it's like, I don't know how to turn my car. I think maybe it's because they learn to drive by watching the Indy 500, and, uh, you know, they just... They just have the wheel kind of turned a little bit all the time on that. And they don't know how to turn a corner. <laughs> Drive fast, straight Confusing. line, turn a corner, don't know what they're doing. Yeah. What's happening here? Yes, that's the SEM, a scanning electron microscope. Light chi bones. They don't follow the signs there. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's weird with people, how people drive, and it's always different. Uh, you found something hiding. Is, hmm, should I zoom on no, this one? Give it a look. It's probably going to be that same cyclotron. Ah, uh, no. Yeah. Uh, it's like a weird fragment. It's a piece of, a chunk of one. I'm allowed to uh, to trash the drivers in Indiana because I've lived here long enough, I feel. After a decade of living in this uh, state, I feel like I can trash it all I want. You see how it's got like lines at the top? Okay, just want to make sure they weren't going to stay that way. The... Yeah, it's just a little bit of a distortion from the edge right there. These ones? I think that... The volcanic ash edge is what was causing the defect. Uh -huh. But I think that's just a typical Star Syra venter. I'm taking a picture. Okay. <laughs> Can you focus on the um, oops the areoli? Just want to see. Where are they? Yeah, any of those. Can we see anything on them? Yes. Because there was also some things in here that had like punctus striata uh, striae, and we didn't think they should have that, but they did. Ooh, those are weird. I don't think we can get it. No. Okay. <laughs> I used to help my friends with driving lessons and I knew they were ready for their test when they were yelling at other drivers' mistakes. Yeah. I try not to get too worked up about it. Um, but sometimes people are just bad at driving. Yeah, what's that? Did you find us a cool Christophite? I don't know. Oh, it's oh, the same it's one. Oh, it's the same one. The no picture. Have we been here before? I don't know. 
I don't think so because I was like going up and then I don't know. Now we're going sideways because you took you rotated it? Mm-hmm. Hey, we're being raided. Another raid. It's our second raid for the day. It's but this one we hadn't seen. Midney corn. It's midney corn. Raiding with a party of twenty eight people. Ooh. Welcome in, Midney Corn. What did you find us? Ooh, what is this? We're looking at diatoms in the scanning electron microscope. And... Huh. That's interesting. It's flat and it has stri uh, areola all over the valve face. Mm -hmm. And then the valve face is kind of colliculate. You should get a picture. Yes. Probably we need to fix the... Can you set the speed to 7 and hit auto brightness contrast? Yes. Just so that uh, it lightens up a little bit. It's a little dark. <laughs> uh, thank you for the raid, Mindy Corn. What were you streaming today? Can you tell us what you were streaming? Incoming science! Part of the knowledge, ship, knowledge Fellowship. Great, as we are. You brought me lots of nerds. We like nerds here. Uh, not just the candy type, too. Thanks for giving them a shout out, Del. I don't like the candy type. You don't like the candy type? Well, have you tried all of them? Yeah. Even the watermelon flavored ones? I don't know. How do you feel about watermelon? I love it. Okay. But not the nerd flavored nerd. Well, now I, I'm not sure, but I, I don't particularly like nerds. It's uh, well, they're just, just like sugar. Yeah, that's why they, they're not interesting. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to candy, they're not very interesting. No. Uh, yeah, thanks for giving a shout out to other microscope streamers too, Dell. And if you don't know who Dell is, what's a field strip? Is that like a field trip? I don't, uh, yeah, Del's right there. And we can give Del a shout out too by the Del like that. What is a field strip? Is it like a field trip? Talking about our first computers and then games we played and also talk lots about coding. It's like a field trip, but for feelings. Oh, ah, very nice. Feelings about your first computers. Let's see, my first computer was a, a Tandy. I'm super old. And uh, you had to load in games you wanted to play with a cassette recorder. So, did I win? Um, so if I wanted to play like a text game, I had to dig out a little cassette recorder thing that plugged into the computer. And then you push a button and then it would play like a little for like five minutes. And then I could play the game on the computer when it was done. Very nice. That's how old You had I am. to work for it. Yeah. And uh, the first video game I played was Pong. So. The first one I played was Mario. Like, I don't know. Super Mario. Yes. Yeah. But I don't know which version or anything. Yeah. Can it you tell us what it was about? Because I bet somebody in the audience knows. They were the at my school's computer and. I don't know what we had to do, honestly. I don't remember very, very well. I just remember I was very excited for getting, like, the shooting thing is Like, Mario went white, and then he could, like, shoot. Shoot the fire. Yeah. Yeah. The flame version of Mario. Hey. You, you did it. You don't even need to do that. I've got a Melco command. It's, it's just a Melco. Like, How are we naming boom. this one? Melco. Look that. Uh, cycloteloid. But is this the same one? That's a, I think it's a different one. But um, it's very similar. Okay, I'm naming it... Um, well, cycloteloid is fine. Give it whatever name you like at this point. <laughs> <gasps> oh, you can no. put the actual name. We'll call it that when you're done. <laughs> uh, there are lots of old nerds. Yours was the BBC. Acorn Electron for them. Cassette-based. 
Anna says that her first computer was put together by her dad in a shoe box somewhere in Russia. Uh, her first game was written by her dad's co-worker. Cool. Waiting five minutes for a game to load and getting an error <laughs> last X value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I talked about the time when kids at school had more tech savvy about computers than the teachers. Yeah, nowadays kids don't know anything about computers. Um, you know, there was like a little, there was like a little wave that went through where kids knew more about computers than teachers did, and now they only know cell phones and maybe and their tablets. IPad. Yeah, maybe their iPad if you, you know, slightly elevated skill set. Um, the kids that came through here that would come from high school, and they had to put together a talk. Like we had some summer, uh, we have some summer projects where we had high school kids come through um, prior to COVID, of course. The, uh, the kids, it's Olicacera is the vowel face of an Olicacera. Oh. Um, but I don't know which one of the ones we saw that that is, but that's a good picture to have. I didn't you know it had so many pores. Some of them it. do. Um, but so, uh, they would come in and they would write their entire PowerPoints on their phone. Like the whole PowerPoint would be put together on their phones. They never used a computer once. They had all the PowerPoint software or whatever on their phone. I don't like that. Put the talk together on their phone and it was better than most of our undergraduates who used computers to put PowerPoints together. Uh-huh. So, I mean, they're top, top end kids who are like doing high school stuff at a university, but, um, but they never could, like if you put a computer in front of them, they don't know how to do anything with software or whatever. They only mm -hmm. know how to use their phones their to phones. do things. So. Asteroids. Yeah, Asteroids was a good game. Uh, except for, I was always nervous about like moving in the game Asteroids because you'd start moving and then it was just like chaos. Like once you start to use the jet, then you'd have this like crazy momentum because it's outer space, right? And then, uh, <laughs> like, trying to get yourself to slow down while there's asteroids coming at you was the challenge. So I did a lot of just sitting in place and shooting things until I couldn't handle it anymore. And then I would just try to move a little bit. Uh, it's, it's in the about, if you scroll down, Del, there's a whole list of people who I have put in commands for besides you and Pacific Clint. Um, C64 with a cassette drive, yeah. You remember overhead projectors? Yeah. Uh, most of the school, when I went to school, most of the professors did things on overhead projectors and uh, transparencies, right? And they would have like a transparency of a science paper that they would then put on the overhead projector and that's how we would see science papers, like the figures, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. And, um, for some reason, I don't know how it happened, but I feel like they could get through more material than I can get through with a PowerPoint, even doing it that way, where they just only use the overhead for some figures and the rest of it was just sort of like chalkboard. I don't know if you ever tried to like keep up with a lecture on a chalkboard, but like, I mean, they must have been so fast at writing on the chalkboard, because like for me, if I had to write out everything I was saying for every slide, it would take forever. And, um, so I don't even know how they did it. Uh, looking back, I think part of it's just that we were forced to read more. So it felt like we learned more like in a semester than I can teach using PowerPoint in a semester. It's a really difficult transition to make because like if you took a typical geology class or biology class or whatever, I always felt like we covered the whole book in class when I was taking it. And there's no way I can cover the whole book in class like no. nowadays. And I don't know if it's just the chapters have gotten longer or if it's that, you know, like people don't read the textbooks at all. So the PowerPoint feels like it needs to be more comprehensive. But um, I mean, the courses were the same length, right? It was the same. We met for an hour, three times a week or whatever. So it can't be that. And they had, they were writing stuff on boards. So like, you know, like I click a button and all the text is already there. I don't usually put a lot of text on my slides, but but I feel like it was hard to 
it's hard to imagine how they got all that material covered without PowerPoint when they had to write it all out and they had overhead projectors. It feels so like, like magical. How did they do that? Um, and I think a lot of it's just that we were forced to read the book and I'm, like in my brain, I just put some of what was in the book into the actual lecture. I don't know. It's an interesting uh, issue from somebody who teaches a lot to think about how they got ar around it in the old days. Um, <laughs> can we bring back laser discs? <laughs> Professor Melko. Uh, do you mean for music laser discs? Or do you mean like laser discs because you want to use those for, uh, for something else? A laser disc projector, yeah. <laughs> Tremors? Um, the good old days. They don't write everything on the chalkboard. Yeah, just the backbone, and I think we were just forced to read the rest of it, and we filled it in in our, in our brains, like, somehow. I mean, we definitely had to do a lot more reading outside of class than my students typically do, so. And hello, Luke. How are you doing? Oh, if I chalk twice as fast, yeah, that probably would work. I feel like I would be able to cover the lectures, and I actually could talk twice as fast. Um, trust me when I say, when I give a lecture, I feel like I'm talking slowly to people, and I feel like I have to talk, like, my speed of talking is below conversational level when I lecture, because I feel like I need to, like, intentionally slow things down for people. And then while I'm lecturing, I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm, you know, like slow talking the whole crowd, which is weird. But, um, but if I were ever at a point where I needed to, like, oh, I've only got like three more slides, and there's only like two minutes left, I could do it easily. I could cover it super quickly, and I'd have no trouble doing the like talky talk part. I don't know if people would comprehend any of it. Is that a, a crisis fight? I think so. Uh, like a a crisis fight with fins all over it. Or is it just one of those little blocky, chunky things we've I been looking at? I think so. Oh, it's got spines. Is it chunky spines? Oh. That's a chrysophyte for sure. Yeah. Why do they all end up with their apertures out of our field of view? I don't know. It would you be very nice to have it like facing us. You know what? There's almost no chance anybody's looked at these chrysophytes and put names or numbers on them or whatever they were going to do. I bet there's like... I bet this is probably the first time anybody's ever seen this chrysophyte in a scanning electron microscope. I bet nobody's ever even looked at the chrysophytes. There you go. I mean, the modern ones we just have numbers for. like. And then the old ones. ones. Nobody even knows what that is, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for following T V U J C H L E B I K S oh M A S L E M X Hi Hi. That's an awesome name. I don't know when you log out, I hope you remember what your name was when you go to log back in. Cuz that's a string of letters. I feel like maybe you stuck your password in as your actual name. Oh my god. <laughs> uh Looked like COVID. Everybody always thinks something looks like COVID. What's What's this? It's boring math professors here in my channel. Look at this. I want to show you something, boring math professor. Look at this. Did it work? What are you doing? Oh, I thought I had a code for you. Do I not? I feel like I put one in. Oh, uh, well, I got one for Melko. Look at this. The, the good people get one. Mm -hmm. There's one for Melko right there. And for some reason, the one for boring math professor is not working. Look at that. Why doesn't it work? Huh. I'll have to look into that. Uh, let's see. I feel like there's one in here. Uh, yeah, the one for Dell works. Yeah, that's weird. There's one for Dell. You want to, you know, there's another one in here. It's just like, um, let's see. I think there's one, yeah, like WD-40. That one works. 
That's weird. There's one for Dr. WD-40 in here. I got one for Melco. Dell's got one. <laughs> Those are respectable streamers, yeah. I, I, I put a lot of respectable streamers in here. Uh, I feel like... I feel like there was one for for Boring Math Professor. Um, I don't know why it's not working though. I'll take a look at it and uh, and I'll see what, what's wrong with it. I'm pretty sure it's in there. I'm pretty sure I typed it in there. It was like, um, I was trying to come up with a good like shorthand for it. And I feel like BMP would have been a good shorthand for it, but I don't know why it's not working, so. Yeah, I thought maybe boring would be a good one, but um, that's not working either. Nope, and the math one probably, it's probably not just math either. Cringe, <laughs> cringe. Huh, it's weird. Um, I, feel like, I feel like I definitely put one in, though. I recommend you go check out Boring Math Professor. He's, uh, he's highly entertaining, you know, and he explains math to people. And uh, I like to go in there. I never know what he's talking about because, um, you know, math's not my thing. But uh, I just like, I like watching him write stuff. His handwriting is superb. Like, I don't know. If I had to write stuff, I feel like people would be like, what is that? But uh, his handwriting is just spot on. He's got the handwriting thing down. What'd you find? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I think it's a fragile area, maybe. Yeah, that's the one for Melco, yeah. Scuffed. <laughs> Mediocre. Ouch. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a fragile area. Those are some pores. I think that's a diatom. It looks like it. It has a diatom feel to it. Uh, it's ulnaria though, not fragile area. Because it's all the way... They're, they match up across. Mm -hmm. There's actually a, a sternum, but the, uh, the striae match up across. Yeah. They, don't, they aren't offset. It's like just a little fragment of an ulnaria. Yep. Mm. Yep. Pretty sure. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Oh, you use math for good, not evil. That's probably a good idea. Uh, does this SEM have spectroscopy too? Uh, it has a elemental analyzer, if that's what you're asking me. Um, it's not a spectroscope, but it does produce spectrum. Um, it's uh, an EDAX elemental analyzer. And um, because what we're looking at is volcanic ash and diatoms, I pretty much know what the composition of diatoms is, and uh, I can kind of guess what the ash would be. Um, but I, I, um, we use it when we look at rocks. Basically, if we want to look at like rock samples and to do elemental analyzing, we've also looked at a bunch of cool things using the elemental analyzer. So, for example, um, one of my students went out and collected lead uh, bullets, and then also collected some of the soil that was around uh, the lead bullets to see if we could find lead in it. And they were looking for like contamination of lead associated with like uh, shooting ranges like the old shooting ranges where they actually use lead bullets and, uh, and then we've used it for looking at well all kinds of things uh, where we want to use analysis of elements so we've had some professional mining people come in they would look at some thin sections of rocks and use it to try to figure out whether they're looking at samples that might have gold in them or not, or silver, 
and so um, they would, you know, they'd come in and actually do some analysis on the minerals that were there to see what the mineral suites were and try to use that to figure out, like, you know, how good is the deposit likely to be. Um, just as some examples. Yeah. Um, I don't usually use it, and I've never really streamed uh, using the, uh, the EDAX because it, uh, it's on a different computer, and that computer's not plugged into the internet at all. And I stream from this one, which is where the SEM is, but the EDEX is on a, a totally separate box, and uh, it's controlled separately. But the two computers talk to each other when the um, when the SEM needs to send information to the EDEX. But I don't think I can actually showcase what's on the EDEX screens without like just pointing a camera at them or something really, really rudimentary. Um, so part of the reason why I don't do that is uh, there's no way to showcase it. Uh, I can't even put it on Zoom because it's like on a totally different computer. And as I said, it's, it's linked, it's connected to each other, but they're not connected to the internet directly. So uh, we could probably connect it to the internet, but then I'd have to do a whole bunch of, uh, you know, installation on this in order just to showcase it, which I feel like is not really worthwhile. I mean, it'll be fun to show people that, but um, but since it's not really like my major field of work. Yeah, how often would you use it? I, I don't use it very frequently at all. Um, there's some students who are going to use it this summer to look at um, fish otoliths. So Ooh. they've collected some ear bones out of fish from the Wabash River. Uh, the ear bones in fish are called otoliths, and they have annual growth bands on them and um, like a mollusk or a tree or anything else, corals that make annual growth bands. And um, I think they're gonna do some elemental ana analysis on each growth to try to see each year if there's any evidence of contamination, contamination in like the that? water um, that would have been attached to the fish's ear bone, like integrated into the materials there. Um, but I don't know how likely that is to produce solid results, and I don't know which, you know, what kind of contamination they're looking for. It could be mercury, it could be lead, it could be, um, you know, something would this a little bit more common. Thing would be the most appropriate thing to figure that out. If you're trying to look at a specific point then on yes. something, yes, okay. because none of the other tools can really do that. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking at like individual, like I need to look at this tiny set of a. Um, you know, a couple microns wide okay. band. Um, there's not an easy way to do that with most of the other tools. Okay, okay. Um, what the elemental analyzer does is it's using the normal technique of firing electrons mm -hmm. down onto the sample. It knocks electrons out of the material, which is what normally happens. And that's what it and sort of um, that's why how we get the, that's how we get the topography. Yeah. But then what happens is when you knock electrons out of the electron cloud. Um, electrons have to replace that electron that got knocked out. Mm -hmm. And they'll move from a higher electron ring orbit to a lower one. And when they do, you give off energy because they're moving from higher state to a lower and that's state. What it and that energy that's given off is uh, in the form of x-rays. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's, that's what it detects. And so part of the problem is, of course... Um, sort of like an XRF thingy. It's ex almost exactly like an XRF. Um, so then... The problem is that there's a lot of elements that the difference between one shell and the next shell might, it might, you know, so it might be like, you know, if you have uh, that jump between two, two different elements, you might get a similar characteristic yeah. X-ray coming out. And so um, it's sometimes difficult to tell what you're looking at specifically. And then there's sort of like a range of things that could be, and it tries to use some sort of uh, algorithm to detect which one it's likely, the most most mm -hmm. likely based on its exact um, energy. But uh, it's a little bit of a guessing game. And you can go in and tell it, oh, okay, well, it's definitely not uh, platinum because there's no platinum in our sample. Mm -hmm. And then it will give you a list of other options for elements, you know, it'll say, oh, the the alpha level of this, the beta level of this, whatever. And then you can go in and tell it which one you think it likely would be. Would be at that based position. on what you know. And then it'll fix them all the way through because it'll be several spectra for that element. If it's if it's occurring, it'll have all of the different electron shells should show up, right? Not just one. So 
We'll get uh, Professor Melko can talk to us a little bit about it if he's still here. I had a classmate in college you looked at, who used them to look at ocean-going microbes that had these crystalline-type accretions inside of them. Uh, probably Acantheria are the only type that I can think of that are like what you're talking about. They have a strontium sulfate skeleton. Um, unless they were looking at something else, uh, the compounds inside these organisms could vary. I don't think they were diatoms because yeah, I remember it was internal as opposed to external. It's probably either a radiolarian or an acantheria, which are a type of radiolaria. Um, it's probably something in that group if it's, you know, if it's an internal skeleton and it's a micro. Uh, it's, it's that. It could be silica flagellate as well, but silica flagellates probably wouldn't have very much variability, and neither would radiolaria, which is why I'm thinking it's probably acantherium. Their skeletal structures are usually strontium sulfate, but I suppose probably pretty flexible, yeah. We've seen some of those. Um, Dr. Winter sometimes has samples in here with acantheria in them. They look like little stars, um, they have like radiating spines that point out from the center. They're pretty cool. And sometimes they show up on Pacific Plankton Stream. So um, she sees some living versions of them in the marine realm. They're they're not in fresh water, they're only in the oceans. This one, genus? I think it's like a Starosyra or something like that. It's a Starosyra. It's two Starosyra oh. sisters that yeah. are back to back, right? The valves are back to back. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's 5.15. <laughs> when totally I go lost track of time. Until 5.30? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We should stop sometime here. I need to get home. You know, eventually. Yeah, yeah. I got the uh, got to finish cleaning our house for the party we're having on Friday. Ah, yes. So, or maybe we aren't having it on Friday, but that's the plan. Depends on the weather. Yeah, I think if there's too much thundering and raining, we might do it in another day. We'll have to see. Because we probably want to do it mostly outside. Yeah. I suppose we could have people over and have like an indoor party, but. Maybe not as much people, or I don't know. But if there's lightning, we could have an outdoor party, and then it would be a fun one. Ooh! You'd just we could have those cages. <laughs> You'd just be hiding under the The Faraday furniture. cages. Yeah, a Faraday cage. Just praying. <laughs> <laughs> You'd just be inside under the furniture. Yeah, with the cat. <laughs> with the cat. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Have you found that tiny interest? No, we haven't. Uh, I only Unfortunately. saw one. We have, uh, we have five stubs that we didn't even get around to looking at though. <laughs> but you will so, tomorrow maybe. Yeah, probably I'll sneak in tomorrow. I have some meetings, some Zoom meetings lined up and then the rest of my day is kind of open. So, and then on Wednesday we'll be looking at these same things but I should have my guest from last Wednesday here again. So that's uh, Dr. Mark Edland and um, Joe Mohan, a former student. He's not a doctor yet? He's not. Okay. He's uh, AVD. So, candidate? He, yes, he's a candidate. He does not have his degree yet. He's still got to finish, he's still got to defend. When will this happen? August, I think. Ooh. I thought committee. you were going to say, like, in two years or something like that. No, no, like he's that. close. He's close. He's looking for jobs and stuff. Oh, wow. So he's, he's, um, he's close to graduated. He's working on paper number three out of three. Ooh, very so nice. Very exciting. He should be done by August. And then, hopefully. But I'm on his committee, so I'll know when that happens. And it hasn't happened yet. So, when he was here, I was in charge of him. When he's there, Jasmine's in charge of him, and I'm his. I'm just on his committee. But a lot of the work he's been doing is related to s some ideas that I dreamed up, and then he stole and turned into his PhD oh. work. So, no. yeah, we're close to the edge. Mm -hmm. Six months of the PhD is when the real science happens. Could be. Could be Mindy Korn. 
Thanks for the follow. Water the cow. Water the cow? I mean... Oh, look at the Chinese Cinderella. That one is... Uh, Not Cinderella? Star that's Starosyra. Starosyrella. But that's a good one to image because... Um, we found something that looked like Starosyrella, but it, uh, it had connecting pieces, like a punctustriata. And that was a mystery from last week as well. This one looks more like a well-behaved Starosyrella. I don't know. It looks like Starosyrella to me. But the other one was also cruciform, so this one is pretty much uh, shaped like a bean. Yes. I'm willing to accept that I star as Cyrilla. The least amount of work potentially, yeah. I don't know. Uh, when I was doing my PhD, uh, I don't know. I had a lot of work that I got done. The last six months was mostly just writing. Sounds very nice. I don't think it's the common thing. No? I don't know. I think it's common. Um, I also counted 2,000 diatom samples, so... Fun times. Yeah. I liked it. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't mind it. And a lot of the diatom samples I looked at had like 95% the same thing. Oh my god, okay. So it made it pretty easy to count the first like 300. And then there was some some in the middle there that were also very low diversity. But uh, So this was just one core? Mm -hmm. oh 13,000 years, 2,000 samples. Of where? Uh, Foy Lake in Montana. Oh my god, That's how deep Kalispell. is this lake? Uh, about 35 meters, and then we got 15 meters of core out of it. So uh, we were down like 50 meters into the water. We cored it from frozen ice surface, which is how I recommend you core a lake, mm -hmm. um, especially if the lake is super deep and your coring uh, requires you to have a stable surface to work from. I core a lot of lakes from boats, and uh, if it's just a short core, like half meter, then those we collect from a cable. Like you just drop it down on a cable and it sinks into the mud, mm -hmm. and then you pull it back up and you've got a core. Um, in the uh, in the case where you have to use rod-driven coring, we actually have to push the sample into the core because you yes. have to go down several meters, and you have to go back into the same hole or similar holes to try to get farther and farther into the, uh, the lake bottom. Sediment record. Those uh, would recommend that you have a very stable surface. Like ice? Like ice. So we went, we bought some um, like pipe PVC to use as casing. Mm -hmm. We cased the hole all the way down to the surface and then cored. And then uh, my main job during the coring was not actually any of the lifting. I was the guy who was in charge of keeping the rods in order because we taped them this one is another Starosyra? Starosyrella. We taped them off like uh, by meter, right? And then someone had to keep track of how far, how deep we were. Yes. And uh, that was my sole job. So I keeping I track the, of this. Keep how deep were we, and how many, and put the rods in and take them off in the right order, so that we were always back into the same place with the same depth. And. Uh, I suppose it's the cerebral part of taking a core. And then the, the person who had to pull the core rods out was always in the worst place because you're right there, you're taking the rods off and they're full of water and they just spray water all over the place. Ah. And you know, it's zero degrees out because you're on a frozen lake surface. Very nice experience. So you're just getting the constant spray of water all over your face. And, no, I and don't want to go that way. Uh, in the freezing cold. And then 
the only time it really sucks is as soon as the sun goes down. Oh my god. Then, um, like during the day while we were recording, I actually took my coat off. Uh, and I just had these big plastic bib, like, pants on. Uh-huh. Like, you know, I worked in a meat factory or something. Uh-huh. And then uh, I have these boots that are a thousand gram boots. And you can wear them. And then when you move around in them, they get hotter and hotter mm-hmm. instead of cold. Yeah, yeah. So um, they're meant for going to Antarctica, but I've never been to Antarctica. And, um, yeah, I just got so hot. I took my coat off. And then but all during day long, the night. I was just, oh, no, as soon as the sun went down, everything we had froze. Like, oh all the rods God. froze. We had, to, we had to find a way to, like, unfreeze them to get them to come apart. And then, I don't know. Uh, and then we all had our coats on really quickly. I so. prefer cold, but I'm bad dealing with it. Like, my body is like, nope. Yeah. So, I don't know. <laughs> Sounds terrible to me. Uh, Trippetti wants to know, do I ever loan out time on the SEM to colleagues in engineering? So, we don't loan out time. We charge them. Um, if they're using our SEM from not our department, and they were not one of the people who, what oh, there's that, Ooh. uh, I think the no the or the Alneria one? I think, um, If they're coming from a part of the college or university that um, did not help us write the grant or did not support the grant, then um, that paid for the SEM, then they could charge $35 an hour, which is actually a really low rate to use the SEM. You want to make it uh, like. at 45 degrees. At 45, I was subtracting. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can also subtract it. I don't know. It's just a I matter of which corner it puts it in. <laughs> Trust me. I don't know. From where you are now, it's 45 degrees. So I want to do 285 one. will work. What Oops. Happened? Okay. <laughs> it's just thinking. Everything's good. <laughs> it's just doing a little thinking. Was I right? Yes. We don't need boring math professor to help us with our math. <laughs> we got it all figured out. That is definitely all narrative. So, but we have had people here looking at, um, uh, 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 solar cells, like, uh, um, chips, microchips, and um, uh, I think somebody was looking at some sort of microfiber stuff. I don't know. Usually I just sit here and try to get what they tell me to get into focus when that happens. The primary reason that we charge them is because, well, one, we need to, you know, maintain, maintain the instrument, but two, uh, they don't know how to use my SEM, so I have to sit here with them and it takes up my time. So I don't actually pay myself any of that money, it just goes into the uh, account. Uh, we use it to help resupply. For the most part. Okay, so. got three minutes left. You're gonna find us one more thing to take a picture of after this? I can try it. Okay. This top was more interesting than the last one. I bet every one as we go around it's more interesting. <laughs> got it. <laughs> we've, we've ordered them in arranged order of from least to most interesting by accident. <laughs> it takes some time to learn, yeah. We had an electron microscope lab in class in college on theory and practice. It was one of my top three favorite classes. So I taught a class on how to use this SEM uh, two falls ago. Yeah. Uh, as a graduate and undergraduate level class. And the students had only like, um, they only did like three or four lectures. And the rest of it was all practical experience, microscope time, where everybody sat here and 
you know, you've got hands-on experience learning how to focus and learning how to use the stigmation, learning how to, you know, basically use the instrument such that they could then walk away with the knowledge, ability skill, to. ability to do it. And then it also, if they wanted to use the SEM for their own research, they could, they could just <laughs> come in and, uh, and could use it. So, and then the primary objective was for everybody to have a separate project. So we looked at, one of the kids looked at fish scales and one of them looked at like snake skin and uh, phytoliths was one of them. Everybody had a separate project, right? And then the last couple of weeks of the class were just like them trying to put together a collection of images that could be used for publication quality, basically. So it was a fun, practical, sort of hands-on experience class that I enjoyed teaching. Um, I think if I did it over, it would just be graduate students only, because the undergrads really didn't have ideas for what their projects would be, and struggled a bit on the, like, how do I put together, a, like, a report or a paper using this kind of information. But I feel like the grad students all kind of got what, what, what they might do with it. So. Oh, did you find something new? Well, I don't know. We'll figure it out. No, I oh. don't know. What is that? The Lacosaira thing, or it's something different? Um, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I think Olicosaira. I think it's like an Olicosaira distance. I would get a picture. It's a good final thing to end on. <laughs> it's pretty. Can you zoom in on the pores? Like super close? Oops, I think that's a bug. Hmm. Can I try to see if I can fix the stigmation? Yes. You want to uh, see into them? I want to see what whether there's poor covers on them. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if that's the case or not. See how we're at 200 nanometers? Mm -hmm. And if you look at the uh, magnification, that's 260,000 times. So we're a little zoomed in. A little bit? <laughs> Probably 200,000. We're not going to do focus much better than at 200,000, probably. When you get zoomed in like this, like this close, the. Um, Stigmation definitely matters. Because now we're just focusing on small details, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll actually be able to see see any pore covers. No, it doesn't look like there's anything there. But I also don't think we're going to get the uh, image any clearer than that. <laughs> so, it was close. Oops. I moved it too far. There. Yeah, it was a fun class. Pocket monsters. I don't know what you mean. Okay.
that's it for our stream today. I want to thank Laura for hanging out and running the SCM for us. We had a raid from Midney Corn, and earlier than that, we had another raid. Two of them came pretty close together. Poor boring math professor. Everybody picks on him. Oh my god. <laughs> you know? I feel like he started it with me, though. So. Let's see. I want to... I mean, that looks pretty good. It's a nice picture. It's okay. <laughs> uh, we got another raid from um, Code Spells. So, thank you, Code Spells. And we also got a bunch of follows. So, Easy Musica, The Fast Snake, Vrabek, Janelle Lee Belly, Cyberni. Cyberdine? Yeah. Cyberdine. Uh -huh. Cyberdine, yeah. Neil W, Light G Bones, Doctor or Johnny Rocket Fingers, uh, Astacon, Astacon. This uh, really long, you know. This is like one of the the password one. Password named person Trippetti. Thank you for the follow. Boring math professor followed it. Did you unfollow me, professor? That's rude. That is just rude. And the water cow. Okay, uh, let's. Go rate somebody. Yeah. Do you have any idea who? Well, look, we have all these people right here. Uh, Twinkle Toes, Jolkson, Rams Reef, Comrade Bubbles, and Who's Brood. The Reef's one. Rams Reef? Yeah. Didn't we rate them last time? I don't know. I feel like we did. Maybe Comrade Bubbles? What is she doing? Mushrooms and tarot. Okay, I don't know. I mean, it's got mushrooms. We'll go visit with Comrade Bubbles. She has bubbles. Oh, she's. Oh. Maybe she was playing a it's game. It's a game. That's okay. Oops, I don't want that one. I want that one. We gotta spread it around a little, you know. <laughs> we can't send it to every time to the same people. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So it's Jolkson is usually on, and I raid Jolkson quite a bit. But uh, you can go check out Jolkson if you're not gonna follow, uh, if you're not gonna go watch Com Comrade Bubbles, then I recommend that you go check out Jolkson. It's got a uh, right there. It's got his own little link. That's not where we're going though. Uh, but just so you know. <laughs> yeah, in case you wanted to go see somebody doing some microscope stuff, Jolkson is on. Oh, that's her coming through my headphones. Oh, okay. It's like, why is my phone talking? <laughs> it's not. It's not. Okay, so thanks for all those follows and for the two raids. That was great. And um, it's Monday, so we'll be back on Wednesday. And Laura can opt to be here or not as she chooses, I guess. So, all right. See you guys later. Bye. I'm waiting for the waving hand that I did. Maybe it won't show. Oh, there it is. Oh, there you go. Then I know that they heard me say bye. And we can go raid. And I can stop.